This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode is brought to you by Blue Apron. And what else? This episode is brought to you by Casper Mattresses. Seems like enough. This episode is brought to you by Harry's Razors. Yeah, fair enough. Happy 200th episode, everybody. We, we accidentally booked three ads. We nailed it. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, official podcast of comicbookmovie.com, where we talk movies, comics, TV shows, my name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me is always my co-host, Nick Mason. Not just another episode. In fact, keep it rolling. i got something. Hang on. What do I do? No, just keep it rolling. I don't know what to do by myself. I just remember something. I think he's just gone to the toilet. I think he's, this is just an elaborate ruse so he can go to the toilet. He's going to come back and like hand me some hand soap and be like, this is for you. And I'll be like, that's the hand soap from my bathroom. But he'll be like, no, it's slightly different. It's only half full because... I dropped it at the supermarket, but I, but I want you to have... Th- he's still not back. I don't know what he's doing. Is he wrapping a gift? This guy, man. I'm so sorry. Episode 200, everybody. He's still filming, James. Yeah. No, we're not filming. It's podcasting. <laughs> Did you run to your car? Yes, I got something. I'm hoping he, like, wheels in a big cake. He's just standing outside. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's climbing inside it. Maybe, he's cl- Maybe he has climbed inside it. I hope he's not going to light sparklers. Okay, so he's bought in a, a cake that he's probably baked himself, almost certainly, even though it's on a plastic tray. <laughs> and it says 198, because for those who are longtime listeners of the Happy show. Happy 198th <laughs> appearance on the Weekly Planet, James. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I have missed two episodes. Once for my honeymoon. Uh, what was the other time I missed well, you, it? You had a kid. I went to Japan. Nice. Yeah, I didn't miss it for having a kid. You left the door open, you dumbass. No, what kind of cake is this? It's a rainbow cake. Oh, do you make it? No. It's, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I didn't. I, I, I literally got you nothing. Now you got me a glass of water. <laughs> oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, all right. Come <laughs> on with the episode. Straight into it? Yes. Should I blow them out? If you want. Yay. I did it. We can eat that later. <laughs> Absolutely, I mean, we you're can. not going to eat it. You're, you're carb free now. I, I'm carb free until I come back from America. Until mm. I go to America, then I'm carb heavy. Now, now explain that. Uh, well, I I want to be in relatively good shape, so I haven't been eating any sugar or carbs. Because like, you're on, you're gonna be, you got to be on film. I got to be. I, I'm doing some Screen Junkies things. I think I'm doing Collider Jedi Council. I'm doing a movie fight. Yeah, I think. that's true. You got to actually be in tip top shape. I got to be in movie fighting fight. shape. I'm going to beat the shit out of Andy Signor. That's yeah, good. The, that's the plan. So thank you. If you're listening to this and you know him, don't tell him. I want to surprise yeah, him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Should we get on with it? Yeah, let's do it. Episode 200. Uh, James Cameron hates Wonder Woman. Did you, did you hear that? Oh, that's right. She's she's a step backwards. Right? Is well, that from I, Sarah Connor? I've got the quote here. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, all the self congratulatory uh, back patting back. I got self-congratulatory self-congratu- right, but not back padding. That's, that's great, isn't mm. it? Uh, Hollywood's been doing now if a Wonder Woman is so misguided. She's an objectified icon, and it's a male Hollywood doing the same old thing. I'm not saying I didn't like the movie, but to me it's a step backwards. Sarah Connor was not a beauty icon. She was strong. She was troubled. She was a terrible mother. She earned the respect of the audience through pure grit, um, etc. Yeah. They're, they're different characters, they though. They are different characters. I, I, yeah, that's true. There's not, I, I don't doubt what James Cameron has done for... For female leads in action movies, sure, right. Uh-huh. I mean, Ripley, Sarah Connor, Jamie Lee Curtis in bloody um, True Lies. Yep, e- even with uh, the script the, scene, the, I guess. Yep, exactly. Catherine Brewster. <laughs> yes, my so-called life from Terminator Three. <laughs> well, he, he didn't do that one, but yeah, oh, sure. Okay, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> but it's a spiritual successor. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Mm. Well, yeah, it's a literal sequel. That's true, but a spiritual successor because he didn't mm. do it. Um, what do we got here? So, yeah, look, I. I well, I don't. I'm not sure what he means by this entirely. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, look, I think what really he means is, please don't forget about me while I film Avatar <laughs> sequels. Yeah. Well, it's too late. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think it's also he, he has you know, and people when he said this, people have called attention to him saying that Terminator Genesis was great. Yep. And mm-hmm. a lot of people didn't really like Avatar in hindsight. So the last movie he really made that people really enjoyed was Titanic, I guess. <laughs> sure, right. So I think it's it's kind it's a bit of it's a bit of kind of you haven't really done a lot a lot lately to kind of Yeah. Yeah. To be throwing throwing punches like this, I guess. Yeah. Is he mad that somebody might usurp his like 
period piece. Uh, yeah, I guess potentially. Because I, Titanic and Wonder Woman yeah. are sort of set in the same era. I guess. I don't vaguely. know. It's, it's just a, it's a strange. I mean, I, I, I think also he's equating beauty with that you can't be like a heroic person. Yeah, like and it's, beautiful, could, and we both know that's not the case. You can be beautiful and a hero. <laughs> and so. a podcaster. That's true. That you is could, so true. You can do it all. That's right. But, uh, yeah, no, so, I, look, I don't I obviously don't agree with him, but, that, that again, that doesn't take away from the amazing movies that he has done. Yeah. I think that's the thing here. Like, people are saying, well, all your films are garbage. Yeah. They're not. He has he has done that's true. amazing Some films. of his films are garbage, but some are amazing. Yeah, well, I, I would say most are amazing. Yeah, okay, all yeah. right. Yeah, all right. All right. Yeah, yeah, fine, all right. What was the abyss like? There was a water face. There was a water face serpent thing. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> well, also, I'd like, I'd like to know in what context he said this. Right, yeah. Because did he just call a press conference and say it? Like, call a press conference in front of his <laughs> submarine or something like that? Because, like, oftentimes when you get the full context of something like this, it's... They're in an interview and the interviewer sort of backed them into a corner right? in a yeah, way yeah, and they're yeah. like, well, would you say Sarah Connor's better or Wonder Woman's better? And Who then, would win in a fight? Yeah, yeah. you know, in, in a fight and he sort of has to back his own character and why wouldn't you? Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Who knows? And I mean, Wonder Woman has does have quite a bizarre like history I, that, in terms it, of... It 100% does. Like it's, it's steeped in like bondage and like yeah. that's, that, that is literally like one of the main sources of its origin. It's based on his... um. His mistress. The yeah, he had a, he mistress, had a wife yeah. and well, he had a wife. He had a wife and a, another partner, I think, yeah, at the yeah. same time. Yeah, and they all were. They're they, all in they on it. They're all in on it. Yeah, yeah. Good so on them. It was the forties, man. It was a different time. <laughs> it certainly was. <laughs> but hey, got some more news here. I'm ready. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three uh, will take uh, place after the next two Avengers movies. Okay. And it will help set up the next ten to twenty years of Marvel movies. James wow. Gunn said it's really going to expand the cosmic universe. Okay, wow. Makes sense to you? Yes. Does that story check out? He's not wrong. He also said that Wonder Woman was shit. And oh, that, James Gunn. Yeah, and Peter Quill's a better female. <laughs> he would, wouldn't he? Hero. Yeah. That's what he said. That's true. Yeah. That, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, that's what kind of Guardians have kind of been there for. It's, it's to expand the, the cosmic stuff. Mm. Yeah. But I, I think we're going to be getting a lot of that in Avengers anyway, aren't we? Because that's, yeah. that's going. The next one's But going I mean, cosmic. surely in the next 10 to 20 years, Marvel will buy back... Surely, they at some point they have to get all their Fantastic Four properties back and well, get. Well, there was news of that this week that they were going to do. They mentioned the story. It was called like Kindergarten Heroes or something. No Mark idea what Millar. that is. Yeah, hang on. I'll quickly look oh, it up. Mr. Mark Millar. Well, I should have done this while you were getting a cake from your car. <laughs> <laughs> but so, because I mean, when I think Marvel Cosmic, yeah, I I, I want to see Galactus. I want to see the Silver Surfer. I want to see sort of. A lot of that um, Andy Lanning recent Guardians of the Galaxy run. I want to see that. I want to see the Annihilators. Yes. I want to see all that kind of stuff. So they gotta got to buy some of that back, man. Yeah, no, I completely agree. What do we got here? I'm going to got the name. Marvel Team Fox Logo Fantastic Four. Kindergarten Cop? Is that what you're thinking? Virgin, it's the, so it's going to uh, feature Franklin and Valeria, two children of uh, oh, blah, blah, the blah. Fantastic Four. Okay. Human Torch and the Thing will also appear. We've heard all that before. Yep. Uh, tonally, it's like The Incredibles, which makes sense because The Incredibles is a, <laughs> is a good um, Fantastic Four movie. I cannot, for the life of me, find it, Mason. Nah, oh, no. You know what you you know what they say though. Yeah, what's that? Prepare your podcast before you start. No to- one's ever said that. <laughs> they say wing it, wing it till you zing it, wing it and bring it. That's right. Bring it. It, it is a cake. And, sorry, rework of Kindergarten Heroes. There you go. Okay, so, right. Which okay. may or may not have been what I said earlier. Yeah, okay. It doesn't matter. It's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Which requires them to have at least some of the Fantastic Four characters. So, there you go. And that's what Fox are doing. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are you, hey, guess what we're doing this Friday? Oh, we're seeing the Inhumans You in better IMAX. believe it, baby. That's right. Oh, boy. Yeah, so uh, we're going to have to record our episode early this week because I leave on Saturday morning. That's so right. we're going to have to... Come out of the theatre, fresh as a daisy, oh, yes. ready to get, in, get into it. It's a good thing we are seeing it this Friday, Mason. Stars in our eyes. <laughs> That's right. But it's a good thing we're seeing it uh, straight away because it's ending its theatrical run a week early, even before oh. <laughs> the movie the is it, movie has been released. Is it, is it pulling a Scaramucci? It's, uh, it's, pull, it's ending its theatrical run before its theatrical run <laughs> has started. So, so that, that's, that's, that's... Technically, po- this is the most... 
popular m- movie we've ever shown here. I mean, it's, it ran for negative days and it made a hundred bucks. So <laughs> statistically, Great, I think yeah. it's very successful. On pre-orders alone. So that that doesn't speak highly, does it? That clearly means like that. What I imagine IMAX and Marvel came to agreement where IMAX realized that through pre-sales, this is not going to make money if they just show Dunkirk yeah, for right. an extra week. Yeah, right. You know, so uh-huh. that's, that's some sort of David Attenborough documentary. Well, have you seen anything for it? No. Other than online. like is Oh, no, like posters or billboards or anything. anything. No, nothing, yeah. nothing at all. Yeah. In, so, in Australia, no. Yeah, so I don't know whether that's the same for overseas, but I, I think this is going to come and go the whole thing very quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. so I'm excited, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. I, ge- I, I am genuinely interested to be like, to see what this is going to be. I'm excited to see what the audience is like. <laughs> right, because yeah. when we, you know, when Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or Arrow comes, you know, the premiere is on, yeah. millions of people... like a bit... This yeah, way again. Millions of people are watching it. Yeah. But you don't know who they are. No, that's so right. So this is going to be great because we're going to see we're going to see their target <laughs> demographic in the cinema. I think it's just going to be board reviewers though. Yeah, probably, yeah. Is it like in the afternoon on a Friday or something? I, I don't know. I'd have, okay, to, right. I'd have to look it up. But okay. Are you excited? Well, I got nothing but time, so. Absolutely, you do not have. You do. I do. Don't you? I do. Yeah, I good. Work off, yeah. Excellent. Mm-hmm. What else we got here? <laughs> Director Adam Wingard says Godzilla vs. King Kong will have a definitive winner. Like some kind of famous boxing match, match that recently Godzilla. took place. Surely, right? Yeah, right? Because he could just laser breath him in half. I know it's not called laser breath. It's called laser breathing. Is that what it's That's called? That's correct. That's what it is, yeah. <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> yeah. What's it actually called? It's called... Um, atomic breath. It's called atomic breath, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say it's called sleep apnea breath, but then I <laughs> ran out of... I couldn't think of it in time. I panicked. <laughs> laser sleep apnea. He yeah. has to wear a mask. When he goes <laughs> Makes to sense. Bed. I, uh... I like that. I, I think because a lot of the times they do kind of cop out with this stuff. To Batman Superman's credit, they had a definitive winner. I didn't think they were going to do it. Yeah, I didn't I particularly guess. like the fight. But see, I'm against that. I don't, think, I don't think that's to that film's credit. I don't think... I think that's against the spirit of superhero movies. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. They shouldn't have to be a winner. They should fight for a bit, then they're mates, as we know, and then you never know who the winner would be. Oh, then they, see, then they're know, like, man. I would have I beat you, you know, and then they're like, nah... <laughs> That's Godzilla and Kick Kong. <laughs> I'd bet you, no, nah. nah. But I mean, if they say there's a definitive winner, it can only go one of two ways. Great. And Godzilla, obviously, or they do the turnaround and it's King Kong, but how? Break the, the jaw, like in King Kong, the Peter Jackson oh, one. Oh, wow, all right. Yeah, and again, they're going to be scaling him up. Apparently, he when he turns up, he's going to be bigger and more kind of Oh, because he's older? Yeah, right, and okay. more kind of scarred. And, okay. And that, it, it, look, it was a good-looking King Kong, man. I watched That's some true, yeah. VFX stuff from the other day on it, and it was, that was yeah, really interesting. They got Toby Kebbell to I be the King they, Kong. I, I guess if, God's, if King Kong got behind him. Yeah. Put him in a sleeper. Oh, I thought you meant yeah, like they, they teamed up. They got behind him and they worked yeah, together that's a common right. well, as goal. We, as, as I'm hoping for, I'm hoping for <laughs> King Kong rides Godzilla in a battle in the sequel. It is 100% going to happen. Yeah, good. I, I think, think it so. might even happen in the, this very movie because they're going to they're gonna end up fighting Mothra or Mecha Godzilla or, so, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah, mm. yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I was going to say that monster lives in the moon, but that was an episode of Doctor Who where the, the moon was an egg. And then turn sure. into a monster, but then it laid another egg, so we still had a moon. Remember that time the devil lived in a black hole or something? Remember <laughs> yeah. that episode? On Mars? Yeah. Yeah, David Tennant won. Yeah. Yeah, he went down. He was like, I they see would, you. They just had a, on the whiteboard, they just went, Can we? should we do a Doom episode? All right, yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah, all right. Let's do it. Uh, do I have any more thoughts about King Kong? Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, I, I don't know, man. That's your I thought. Mean, <laughs> I mean, scale him up still, but, you know. Scale him down. Oh, so he's like the size of a pea. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, look, I'm I'm, I'm 100% not against it. Because King Kong, Godzilla's invulnerable to conventional weaponry and King Kong is not. Yeah, that's true. But then... Maybe in, if he gets bigger, I don't know. But right. also in 40 years after whenever King Kong... Yeah, that's true. ...set yeah. Kong Skunk, Skull Island. <laughs> it's hard to say. It's hard to say. It is. Kong Skull Island. We have a lot of trouble saying a lot of very easy words. Somebody That's not in, just this week? Somebody No, every week. Somebody <laughs> tweeted in and said, instead of saying choreography, which we can't do, we should say blocking instead. See, I'd confuse myself. Me too. I feel like that's when you kind of, you know, you go out to your car and the wheels are missing. <laughs> There's just bricks <laughs> where they used oh, to be. Oh, man. <laughs> I've been blockinged. Yeah. Again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some <laughs> local thespians have been doing some blocking around my car. Oh, well. <laughs> it helps them get into acting college, I guess. <laughs> 
Uh, Adam Wingard is also the director behind Death Note. Did you watch that? No, I didn't watch it yet. Did well, you maybe watch we'll it? talk about it a bit later. Okay, cool. But yeah, I have some thoughts. Oh, really? I might save it for what we're reading. Okay. Our famous segment. Without, telling, without saying to the listeners, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Oh, all right. But that's only because I've only ever seen this particular version. Okay, right. Also, for those listening, that was not a positive response. <laughs> but yeah, all right, but it wasn't a negative response. No. Look, I did the middle thumb, He did the right? middle thumb thing. Yeah, but... Like he's Caesar at the bloody okay, gladiatorial I'll, I'll arena. Quickly, okay, I'll quickly say this. The reasons I liked it because the thing... It, no, sorry. What I liked about Death Note was... I, I'm familiar with the premise, but I wasn't really up to date with the core ideas and the characters and, and okay. the events that take place. This movie does a really condensed version of the anime and manga. Okay. So a lot, of t- a lot of the times through it, I'm like, that's a really interesting idea. Oh, I like that character. I'd like to see more of them. Oh, that seems to be happening a little bit quick. Why is this soundtrack so weird? Okay, right, and right. So I think the core ideas are strong, but the execution is not. Right, okay. Yeah, but obviously the core ideas are strong because the source material is strong. Would you say that it might be a better idea to make it a longer animated series as opposed to a live action yes, show? Yes, okay, 100%. Cool. Right. Yeah. I just think some of the casting strange. Well, that's never going to happen. Yeah, so. I just, I'm not... Yeah, it, it's. I, I wish I had read or watched the, yeah, right, the previous okay. incarnations because now when I go back to it, because I know the rough outline. Yeah. Because they've taken like 30 odd hours and compressed it into 110 minutes or whatever, or two hours, whatever it is, which is, in, which is impressive. Yeah, right. But it's. Yeah, it's. it's yeah, it's. Yeah. It's not horrible. Okay. It's not horrible. <laughs> Terrific. I'll say but I think if you are a fan of it, then yeah. It you're would, an idiot. But no, it, no, I mean, if you're a fan of the original, then yeah, yeah then, you would hate it. See, I don't know about that necessarily. Yeah? I mean, I think, you know, like, if I think of, like, Iron Man, mm. you know, they compressed decades of Iron Man storyline into the first Iron Man movie. No, no this it, is like, because this isn't just, like, ideas and vague things about him. Like, oh, they kind of touch on his... It's specific things where they kill this person, this person, then this guy comes okay, after right. him and then turns up and, and whatever. So it's 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 events okay, that right. they're kind of okay. streamlining, gotcha. if that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Oh, it makes sense, baby. I'm glad. Does this make sense to you? Sean Levy, director of the Uncharted movie and also Stranger Things, uh, says that it's going to be like Indiana Jones. It's going to be an Indiana Jones story for a generation that didn't grow up with Indiana Jones. So imagine Indiana Jones. Yep. But you've okay, never seen. That. But you'd, sure. you've never seen oh, Indiana I, Jones. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> what do you uh, see? Uh, Nothing, I guess. No, I'd, I'd like it. Maybe a dog in a hat. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I guess. This sounds, this sounds like the name of a dog in a hat, doesn't it? Yeah, that dog is all over you yeah, today. Yeah, right? Yeah. dog. Because I was holding the cake earlier. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. You got that cake smell on you. <laughs> the cake smell. I think you now you're a little too far from your microphone. Your oh, dog's no. pushed you away. Come on, dog. <laughs> dog's pushed you away. All right, what about now? Yeah, that's better. Okay, sounds good. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so if you've never seen Indiana Jones. Yeah. It's a new generation's Indiana Jones, which no, but I see, like. But, that's, but also, he's... I'm getting make... rid of this fidget cube. I keep, I keep, I keep clicking it and yeah. I can hear it in the mic. I'm sorry, everybody. Go on. So, well, I was going to say, it's an Indiana Jones movie for people who haven't seen Indiana Jones. Yeah. You have to put Indiana Jones in that reference. Yes. You know what I'm... So it's... So, yeah. So when you're explaining it to people. Yeah. Like... Guys, hey, k- gather around, kids. This is an Indiana Jones movie. A what? Well, uh, he's like a dog in a hat. What? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. But, okay, that's, yeah. Yeah, I think, we, I think we could, get it, yeah. I think it could be interesting. Yeah, sure. To, I think Sean Levy, you know, he, he's done a, he's done Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Tom Holland's good at what he does. He looks enough oh, that's like... That's right, Tom Holland is in... He's, he's the young he's Nathan Na- Drake. Nate Drake. Okay, sure. And he might be for many years to come. Mm-hmm. Unless, well, it's a video game movie, so probably not. <laughs> so. Yeah, right, exactly. Maybe this is the one, though. Mm. Okay, think about it this way. Sean Levy took uh, all the core elements of the 80s. That's true. Right, and put them into Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. But can he do the same for Indiana Jones with a boy? Dogs and hats. Yes, Dogs I, and I reckon good. he probably can, yeah. Excellent. That's true. I meant to ask you if you'd uh, watch this. Did you watch a Black Mirror Season 4 trailer? Yes, I did. Oh, Charlie good. Brooker put it up on his uh, Twitters. And there's a there's a Star Trek one. Uh, there's yep. a whole lot of... Oh, there is a Star Trek there's one. There's a whole lot of other imagery that They're out really of context bro- is weird. Do you feel it's broadening out? I think the ideas are broadening out, but that might also be budgetary. Yeah, okay. So sure, it doesn't right. just have to be, we're in London and everybody wants to kill themselves because they've got a chip up their nose. See, I feel that the ones where everybody wants to kill themselves because <laughs> they've got the chip up their nose are better because, because yeah. they're more true and they're closer to now. Right, but yeah. But the, the further the ones where we're, we're in out of space... Or you do hate... You, you have a history of hating the further away ones, like the bike one, though. The bike... The, the, 
possible apocalyptic future where they're all on exercise bikes for some reason yeah. or the one where they're in the virtual reality world future yeah. or I didn't like that one. other ones. But give me, give me ones where there's, there's killer bees or there's <laughs> the, the first one, the national anthem, which I still don't want to spoil even though if you haven't yeah, seen, if you haven't if you haven't seen Black it. Mirror, just watch the first episode. Yeah, it's on and, Netflix. And it's, uh, it's, you, you will not enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> It's very true. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to recommend, isn't it? You've got to be really careful about who you recommend that episode to. That's true, yeah. Because if you could come away looking not good for That's recommending very true, that yeah. to people, yeah. 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 Anyway, it looks, yeah, looks good. I'm Like, as always, is it six new episodes? I believe so, Well, yeah. as always, I'm looking forward to three to four of them. <laughs> right. Three to four of them will be very good, in my I, opinion. I think people are harsher on them as they've kind of gone on, as they've got kind yeah. of more popular. But I think mm. generally they're, they're, they're still pretty strong. That's true, yeah. Yeah. All right, what else we got here? Michael K. Williams was cut from the Han Wait, Solo... is that Omar? Yes. Okay. <laughs> was cut from the Ho- Han Solo... Omar from the wire. That's right. It was cut from the Han Solo movie. Yeah. Because, as you know, it's reshooting at the moment. Donald yep. Glover just wrapped. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... The reason he was cut was because he couldn't get back for reshoots because he's shooting something, some another movie in Africa or whatever. Oh, okay, right. So he couldn't get back. So it was apparently a, like a, an alien-ish character. Sure, right. <laughs> so uh, I don't know whether that means a lot of prosthetics or just different eyes or a chip up his nose. Who chip- knows? It's Star Wars. You don't know, do you? You don't it could be anything. Mystery. could be anything, yeah. Uh, so that's fine, I guess. What mm. do you do with reshoots? It's a shame because he's a great actor. Maybe he's a young Snoke. Oh, he's got the scar. It's right from the yeah. chip, <laughs> from the chip up his nose. That's right. <laughs> so, I uh, oh, new theory. I can't wait to tell to tell our friend Steel Saunders about my new Snoke theory. <laughs> that he's Omar from The Wire, the guy that was cut from <laughs> famous the Hard Solo famous movie. Baltimore vigilante <laughs> who was killed, I think, in season five. I, you know, what? I haven't seen The Wire. Oh, that's good. I know everybody mm. says that, but do you think it? Do you think if I go to it now, I'd be like, well, I've seen Breaking Bad and I've seen amazing television since then. Do you think it's still that level? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Good. More so, in fact. More so, in yeah, fact. In fact, yeah. Okay. Is it better than... Look, the- I'm not. Uh, look, I'm definitely a, a, the wire booster. Yeah. But I... I mean, I shut up about it. I'm like, I'm like an atheist. That really, will you just shut spoiled up about it. season five for me. Yeah. Get prick. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Maybe he lives. I can't remember. Um, but when I watched the... Uh, after I finished watching The Wire... I went, i got to find something else to watch. And people were like, you should watch The Shield with the commission in it. Yeah. And I watched it. I'm like, this is just a TV show. Yeah, right. which feels like Which feels real pretentious on my behalf. But I'm like... Well, The Wire changed. It did change television, yeah, they right, say. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. The Shield isn't anyway, the commish, is it? <laughs> it's a different... It's a different guy. I wish it was the commish, but it's not. Different guy or different actor? It's Michael Chiklis. Yeah, okay, good. But it's, he's not the commish. <laughs> okay, good. He didn't get bumped down to a, like a, like a SWAT team strike force and the became The commish corrupt. was before The, the Shield. shield. Yes, right? correct, yes. Yeah. Do you, so do you reckon The Shield came off the back of the wire? They went, well, we can make cop stuff too. But, uh, but I don't know. I don't know how the timeline's worked out. Okay, Maybe. good. Yeah. All right, fair enough. More mm-hmm. Star Wars news though, Mason. Oh, yes. You're a big fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's new vehicles released. We look, you looked at pictures before the show. I said, look at these. One looks like a, an AT, an at at walker with a club foot. Yes, it's called the ATM6. Yep. Or the Atom6. Because it's uh, got a, like a Mega Buster 6 gun on its back. All-terrain Mega Caliber 6. Mega Caliber 6. It's got, a, it's got a cannon on its camel hump. Yep. Yeah. I like to think that it's also still a troop transport. So whenever they fire the gun, the troops have to like leap out and hang on the side. <laughs> like they're on a train in India or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be up for that. Yep. They get one they got one red light and they've got two seconds while it charged and they're like, oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Jump out the sides. Do you reckon uh do you think like it's been thirty years since Empire Strikes Back or a bit even a few a bit more? Yes. Like this is the progression is just a slightly more armored vehicle. It's it's apparently it's gorilla like, it's simian. Yeah, it's got the the yeah. yeah. Just it flings poo. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, do you think that's? Do you think they've gone far enough? Well, no, because I mean, obviously, there's a massive design flaw in the Adat Walkers that they can be tripped over. Yes, but I think that maybe the gorilla arm, maybe the gorilla legs are so they can. Yeah, be I think they're going to be more dexterous. Yeah. So I think they might even try that. They'll be like, do the thing that. Yeah, right. None of us did, but some people did <laughs> forty years ago yeah. or whatever. Yeah, this is definitely going to work. Yeah, that's true. Maybe you can climb things. Maybe you can climb walls. Yeah, well, they had. I remember in the expanded universe. I think it was in the. 
I can't remember that. They use like they had like spider ones and they use them to crawl yeah. up walls. Well, they're supposed to be all terrain, aren't they? Well, they're it's not, not just, all terrain. It's just are most they? terrain. So I would say some terrain. Barely any terrain. <laughs> bat. They should be bat bat at walkers. Barely any terrain walkers. One terrain. Yeah, they should call it snow sometimes. <laughs> snow sometimes. Well, no, I mean they did pretty well in uh, on the on the beach planet. Yeah. They? Well, snow and sand aren't dissimilar in terms of color. That's true. <laughs> so. You're not wrong. Just a few shades, isn't it? That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. Also, those ones in uh, Rogue One weren't specifically for battle. They 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 were they were cargo. Oh right. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I hate to be, hate to get all technical on you, Mason, but yeah. you're a fucking idiot. Oh what? <laughs> there was also the first order dreadnought. Yeah. It's a big ship. It looks like the star destroyers. <laughs> yeah. But it's they 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 threw the figure. I think it was seventy seven hundred meters long. 7,700, okay, yeah. How long's a Star Destroyer? I'm going to look it up real quick. Probably less. So it's nearly eight kilometres. <laughs> yeah, right. Is that right? Yeah. You said 7,700? 7, 7,700 yeah. metres, yeah. What's that in feet? What's that in miles? What's that in British pounds? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Brexit. It's a full Brexit. It's a I full believe. Brexit. It's a full Brexit, exactly. I didn't think we were there yet. Okay, so the a standard Star Destroyer is 1,600, wait, 1,600 metres. Oh, wow. So this one's a real big. What's a Super Star Destroyer? Let's look it up. <laughs> This is kind of insight you can only get. That's on wo- right on Wikipedia. Yeah, that's right. Superstar, no, not Suoista. Superstar Destroyer Lego. Very nice. Yeah, big that. Uh, Those things are real expensive. The Superstar Destroyer is nineteen thousand meters. Well, that's really put the the New Order Destroyer in perspective, hasn't it? Yeah. No pff, good. Chuck it in the bin, mate. <laughs> Seventy-seven hundred meters. That's less. Wait. That's less than half a super a super star destroyer. Ridiculous! Idiots! It's smaller than a lot of things I can yeah. think of. Yeah. Nothing springs to mind. The actually. Death Star. It's smaller than the Death Star. Smaller than other ship. There was a planet. Yeah. Smaller than that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Looks pretty good though. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's got some big old guns on it. <laughs> Mason, we mentioned uh, that I I'm going to Los Angeles next week. That's right. And then to vacay. That's right. Vacay Vegas. Spend some time in Hollywood. Hollywood. Claire said to me. You know what you should do? You should go see the sign. And I said, I'm not going to see the sign. And she goes, Why not? You have to go while you're there. And I said, I'm not going out of my way to look at a big word. Is that unreasonable? <laughs> no, that's fair. Yeah. Is that unreasonable? Have you been to any of Australia's big, uh, big things? By the accident, big banana, like I passed them. The big prawn. Yeah, the big koala. I've seen a few. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The dog on the tucker box, <laughs> regular sized. I don't know that the one. The big Ned Kelly. What's that? It's a big Ned Kelly. Okay. Yeah. Where is where is it though? I think it's in Glen Rowan. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good. Anyway, I mean, ex- explore the big things in your city before. Correct. You go to Hollywood. All right, I will. I'll do that this week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the, me- the reason I mention that is because I'm not going to be eating out the whole time I'm there, Mason. I've got some blue apron food that's that's lined up for that's me. That's right, you do. Uh, it's for the lesson they're less than $10 per meal. This is an ad by the way. I was Just say. so everybody's clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, blue apron delivers seasonal recipes. The, se- the segue was so <laughs> seamless. That we could have just talked about it for the rest of the episode and then just labelled it 10 best Blue Apron meals. Nobody would have noticed. <laughs> no, I don't think so. They'd be like, oh my God. But this is an ad. Uh, uh, pre-proportioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. There's also a bunch of variety. Uh, they can also, you can be like, hey, I want these specific things or you can get a bit of a surprise. Uh, there's also like several delivery options to, to suit your needs and there's no weekly commitments and each meal is also step by step. The instructions are set, are yeah, set nice. out. I've had a look, Mason, because I need mm. to know whether this is in my wheelhouse. Yep. It absolutely is. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're bloody, they're portion controlled. Yes. Like they're, like, again, like my biggest problem with cooking is I either, either make too much or not enough. Or somebody's like, hey, you know how you can make an economical meal is you just make a gigantic tray of this and then you <laughs> stick it in your freezer and you eat it every day for two weeks. And I'm like, what if I don't want to eat the same thing for dinner every day for two weeks? They're like, um. And I'm like, what if I don't eat it in there by two weeks? And they're like, oh, it spoils. And I'm like, this is, and they're like, but it's like, it's only like 10 bucks. And, 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 you're not selling it, but this is good. No, yeah, exactly. The variety. Yeah. This is what I want. Portioned. Yeah. Also, it's uh, uh, there's a guaranteed promise that the ingredients are der- arrived, ready to cook, and if they don't, they'll make it right. Nice. This is the call to action. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping if you go to blueapron.com slash weeklyplanet. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash weeklyplanet. Blue Apron, a better way to cook? Nice. That's not a question, so yeah. A better way to cook, definitively. Nice. More, okay. That was one of three. <laughs> Great. <laughs> the joke is... We've survived one third of the way through. We did it. 
Uh, have you heard all the DC news? I've, I've bundled it all together. Oh, good. Yeah, that was a, was this was, was a it's real a, shit show. Mate. I was going to say a bumper crop, but it's that too. You're right. Yeah, but the uh, thing about this is, before we go through all of this, bear in mind a lot of this is rumors. Yes. So it's just I'm just kind of going through the what's been said. I'm not I'm not saying whether any of this is tr- and some true. And some was clarified as well. Some was clarified. So, so there were some rumors, and people were like, "Oh my god, he must mean this." And then he then the the person involved was like. Actually, what I did mean was that. And they're like, oh my God, maybe he actually still means this though. No. <laughs> so the the big uh, point of contention, or the first one was that uh, Martin Scorsese will produce uh, a film that yes. Todd Phillips will direct. Of the Hangover is, fame. Of the Hangover fame of War Dogs. Oh, which yeah. I think they work together as well. Oh, Two of the see. biggest pricks in Hollywood, Jonah Hill and Miles Teller together at last. <laughs> That's right. If the rumours are to be believed. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Make a call. I think uh, Jonah Hill's looking very svelte these days. Do you think he look after, uh, after himself probably on some blue apron we're out of the ad yeah oh, right, then never forget it then <laughs> no i'm still on board i'm on board with the you know what i'm always on board with the previous ad until the next ad starts <laughs> okay, good. yeah i don't drop the previous ad until we do another ad at that point that ad's gone forever new ad so the idea is that they're going to be working uh on a joker origin film terrific here's the twist yes it's a story set separate from the dceu yeah which is the dc extended universe because it's a very extended universe. That's right. Mm. Because they're going to they're going to create a series of films that aren't connected. This being one of them, allegedly. The intention is to make a gritty and grounded, hard boiled crime film set in the early eighties uh, Gotham City that isn't meant to feel like a DC movie, but but more of a Scorsese uh, film from that era, like Taxi Driver. But it's a supervillain film. But it's a super. That's interesting. Now that you've phrased it in that way, yeah, that actually sounds pretty good. But it's a Joker origin story. Yes. Does that interest you? I mean, we have had Joker origin stories. Yeah. Before. No, so, so one of the I feel the best thing about the Joker's origin is that we don't know what it is. Right. And then any time we hear about an or like a Joker's origin, you need to have the proviso that maybe this isn't true either. Right. So if they if they would to if they would make it an Elseworlds or if they throw in the you know, and like it maybe like a bridging like a like a like a book ending of the story. Like yeah. maybe a modern day book ending where the Joker explains his origin and it's implied that it's probably not true, then I'm completely happy with this right. origin. Okay. But also it's not gonna be Jared Leto, right? It's gonna well, be I was somebody gonna say, else. I think the best thing about a Joker origin <laughs> is that it's not Jared Leto. Yeah. So they're gonna be getting a whole new casting a whole new Joker. But the other thing is this I like is the, I really like the idea of Scorsese doing a superhero supervillain thing. I like the idea of Scorsese directing a superhero film. Yes. For villain film, but this isn't. Oh, he's producing. He's producing, right? Okay. So sure. I don't like how how is he how involved is he in this? Yeah, I like the idea of like his particular take, and he, he's not adhere to certain rules of the universe, especially when he can go off and do his own thing. Yeah, right. I like that, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm, I never got around to War Dogs. Was Me that neither. Any good? Okay, I right. It was fine. So, so how is Todd Phillips in a? Is he Scorsese light? Is that what? Is that where he's going with this? Did I, he start out with The Hangover? I think he started out with Old School. Right, okay. So, well, that did have the Godfather in it. Remember, there was a character who was the yeah. The I think head that's of the true. Fraternity. Yeah, you're right. That's true. Yeah, yeah. He did War Dogs. He did the Hangover films. What else we got here, Mason? Can you see that? Can you see this from here? No. So it's my because my computer's facing the wrong direction. It's completely the wrong direction. <laughs> okay. I can see the back of the laptop. Are you assuming that my vision is so fine that I can see what's on your screen reflected off your eyeballs? Correct. Yes. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. What do we got here? Hang on, filmography. Uh, director, he did Hated, Gigi Allen and the Murder Junkies. Okay. He did Frat House, Road Trip, Bittersweet Motel, Old School, Starsky and Hutch, which is getting a reboot at the moment on TV with James Gunn. Huh. Uh, School for Scoundrels, The Hangover, Due Date, The Hangover Part 2, Hangover Part 3, three. War Dogs. I saw huh. Due Date. Yeah. That's Robert Downey Jr.'s and, uh, Garth Marcus. Like, yeah, it's, no, it's whatever. Okay, great. The other thing Terrific. is, okay, if... My relax- See, I never got around to Hangover Three either. Terrible. Was it just? But it wasn't really a comedy, even, was it? Wasn't it just quite grim? It was a bit grim, yeah. Maybe that's and okay. very unfunny. Then maybe that's where he's going with this. Like maybe his his career arc, like he's just like the easiest way to get into Hollywood was is comedies. But I want to do real grim stuff, right? Maybe. I so don't he's know. segueing into it. Yeah. The thing is, as well, we already had an uh, '80s Joker origin movie. It was Batman '89. Oh yeah. <laughs> but hey, but look, I'm not. 
I'm not entirely against this because I like the idea of Elseworlds stories. Yeah, right. But this particular... Like, there's too many questions surrounding this for me to be like, oh, this is great. Yeah, right, absolutely. There's a lot of things that we don't know, namely... Is this even true? <laughs> so, That's, that is that number one. I mean, if we could have definitively figured that out before this recording, we could have maybe not had to say anything at all. <laughs> That's right, I mean, yeah. great. Um, are we going to have the same? Is it going to be? See, that's the thing. Is he? Are they? Are they decided they're going to be bound by some of this continuity? Is he going to look like the classic Joker, or is he going to be like some sort of street tough who keeps getting a series of? Joker themed tattoos until he becomes the Joker. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember there was a comic, I can't remember what exactly it's called. He's he's like a common criminal and he's he's so bored of like just robbing banks and everything and he's about to kill himself until Batman comes along and it just gives him like the will oh, to Oh sure, yeah. Uh-huh. What's that comic called? I can't remember. Anyway, it's good. Nice. So if something along the lines of that and it is more kind of it's a, it's more of a crime drama than a Yeah. And he's just toying with Batman, like he's not even uh-huh. he's like this is this is why I'm doing stuff now, which I guess is the the point of the Joker a lot of the time. Yeah, and I think Batman gives him the scars, like he hits him with a batarang and oh, gives him okay, the smile. Right, right, yeah. okay, that's I wish that's I could. fun. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I'm I as as these DC movies chug along, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm becoming increasingly more okay with the idea that this Joker is the is not the first Joker. That yes, he's a se- that he's a, the se- a second one, or he's Jason Todd, or he's. You say that because you want him to be swapped out. Is that what you're saying? That no, I, but I, I, it, I think it's because I'm, I'm also more and more on board with the idea that he, that these movies are set in the Tim Burton Batman universe. Right. I'm more and more on board with that. I, <laughs> the, I mean, they're they're not going to go away for at least a little while. So I think the until the, Flashpoint, until Flashpoint, they reboot it. But the idea that I, I'm, I'm becoming okay with it. I think it's probably Stockholm syndrome. Because I'm just like, eh, you know what? If if it's if Batman started out like this in the Tim Burton universe, this is the logical endpoint. Right. So yeah. I guess I'm okay with it in that sense. Yeah. If you like, this isn't comic book Batman. It's not accurate Batman. It's not good Batman. <laughs> but if you started the universe like it's none this, none of the things you know are like. If you start if you if you started the universe like this, and then. 20 years of Batman, like, setting clowns on fire in the street <laughs> and, like, throwing people off bell towers to their death or whatever and just 20 years of that yeah. and nobody's... And, like, he kept, like, building a bigger and bigger <laughs> tank of a Batmobile to the point where he's this paranoid lunatic who's completely invincible and he's been doing that for decades. Great hair. Yeah, exactly. And then this is where you end up. I'm like, well, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. You're right. I mean, it's still no good. <laughs> it was very upsetting to watch it, but I still, th- I, I think also, I don't still think. I think there's a chance that if they introduce this new Joker, yeah. then they flashpoint. They just go this now is, he's the this now is he's the, the current one. Okay, yeah, Joker. right, yeah. But speaking of the Joker, yes. uh, the crazy stupid love writer directors of Glenn Ficarra and John Requia. Now, who's, who's, crazy stupid love was the one Steve with Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling, yeah, Emma okay. Stone. It's good. It's, it's actually all right. all right. I've seen some of it. It's all right. Get out of here, Mason. I've seen some of it's it. all right. It's yeah. quite funny. Uh, There's a bit where they he, he gets you get Steve Carell all like fancied up, jazzed and up, up yeah. jazzed up, and he, boy, that's dated. <laughs> well, it was 2011. Yeah. What do you yeah, want? That's true. Uh, anyway, they're in talks to write, direct, and produce the upcoming Joker and Harley Quinn film. Jared Leto will return as the Joker. <laughs> Terrific. In this one, yep, uh, Margot Robbie will also return. Uh, this is going to be after Suicide Squad two. It's going to be a criminal love story. David St- David Ayer was going to do it, but now he's not. Or maybe that was Suicide Squad two. I don't know. And Gotham City Sirens has been pushed back. Okay, for now, it was said that it was cancelled. Yes. Do you get the feeling that maybe they're just throwing this out there to see how the internet reacts and yes. goes? That was the one that people hate the least. Let's do that one. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think about this? Wait, though? which one is the one we hated the least? I, I just mean in general. Oh sure, right. I, don't, I don't think they're listening to us specifically. Oh, I just well. mean the general, you know, the, the yelling of the internet. That this isn't my version of whatever. The I thing guess is that's true. If about. they are listening, bring back Billy Dee Williams as Two Face. They already did that in the Lego Batman movie. Well, they did too. Yeah. yeah. Do it live though. Okay, do it live. Do it live. Done. Yeah. I will. Okay. I mean, I can't obviously. Yeah. Right. yeah. You, you know what though? On on this, yes, this uh, Joker Harley movie. Some of the best stuff in Suicide Squad was the Joker Harley origin stuff. Yeah, okay. Which is very brief. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. But I, I really liked seeing it. Yeah, okay. So, right. And that was, for me, I remember coming out of it being like, you know what, I would that would have been the movie I wanted to see. Mm. Yeah. What about you? Look, it's going to be 
it's going to be upsetting for interns all across Hollywood. Yeah. You know, all the bizarre things they're going to have to ferry across to producers and co-stars and just used condoms and dead rats in bags and whatever. But <laughs> yeah, right, I'll say it. But it's, how many... Did they, how many Joker Harley properties are coming out now? Gotham City Sirens, Suicide yep. Squad 2, uh, New Joker Origin. New jo- uh, yeah. I think Joker that's and Harley, so that's four, four. Four. Wait, is that again? Gotham City Sirens, Sirens. Joker and Harley, Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad 2. 2. What was the fourth one? New Joker Origin. That's four. If that's Harley in it. Oh, Joker and Harley. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, right. Again, if this is true. That's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. We've got more news, right? More DC news? We do. Well, yes. before I get into that, you mentioned shipping rats to people's producers or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Jared Leto was on an interview with Australia's own Kylie and, Kyle, Kyle, Kylie and Jackie O. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, Kyle and Jackie, Jackie O. o yeah. Two of the worst people in the business. Correct. <laughs> uh, they And he talked about the Joker and Suicide Squad and Jared Leto said, no, there's so much hype and bullshit about it. I think it's just a fun thing to talk about. Even when Suicide Squad came out, there was so much re- misrepresentation about what went down, about the method acting crap. Like, it was just 90% not even true. It just takes on a life of its own. These were your co-stars saying these things about <laughs> you. <laughs> That's true, It wasn't yeah. like... These weren't it stories, interns. rumors. It was like Will Smith was like, "Yeah, he sent me a bag of bullets with my name on it." Yeah, and Jai right. Courtney's like, "Yeah, he boomeranged a used condom to me or whatever." <laughs> right, that's true. So I don't. Yeah. What does he mean, ninety percent? And I love how he's like, you know, that method acting crap. Yeah. yeah. Bullshit. He, you did that for six months. Yeah. He gutted a crocodile and he <laughs> put the skin all over me while I was asleep. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've talked about method acting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I love that how he's kind of like, no, that was that's not how it went down at all. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right mate. Anyway, Justice League Dark, here we go. All right. Oh, do you want to do yours? Do you, you've got a bit of news that you want to touch on? I've got more. Oh, no, I don't have anything. Okay, good. Because I'll I'll, you mentioned other news. I, no, I thought it was uh, the Batman. Oh, we're later. getting there. Oh, no, we'll get there. Yeah, that's all right. I can, I can There's wait. There's been a lot of DC. I've got some stuff to say, all right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, studios apparently uh, are going back to work on the script. Because the recent presentations by directors were underwhelming to executives. Mm. So, Just League Dark. <laughs> in the dark. And yeah, fart in like, the dark. Fart in the dark, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg has apparently been cut from Justice League. <laughs> Fine. Great. Didn't, uh, even, didn't even think for a second they would have put him in it. <laughs> no, me neither. I mean, a, a prison scene maybe? A prison break possibly? Yeah, he gets shivved. Gets shivved. That'd yeah. be great. By Batman? By Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or by real Lex Luthor would yeah. be my hope. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like he goes into prison and then it, then there's a title card that says two minutes later and then he's like, hey, dad. And his dad's like, there's only room for one Lex Luthor in this prison and just stabs him. <laughs> yeah, That'd I'd, I'd watch that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, is, this isn't this is fun. Uh, Joss Whedon's ex, ex-wife, Kay Cole, oh, yeah. uh, came out and said that basically he's a hypocrite for preaching feminist ideals because the whole time they were together from... From when he made Buffy in the mid '90s, he's just been sleeping with actors and and interns, interns and fans and, and, and all sorts, and yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah, whilst being like, why isn't there enough strong female characters? Yeah. Women can whatever. It's such a and all the this this was pointed out to me in all the the because I read that and there's a lot of you know anecdotes and like stuff he said and whatever. They're all like they all come off like he's like, hey, ain't I a stinker? Look at me, I'm such I've, a. I've got a quote here. Yeah, it felt like I had a disease. This is because he sent her letters. By the yeah. way, again. There are two sides to everything. Sure, right. We don't we don't know his side of it. He's been quiet about it. This is just what this is just mm-hmm. the information we have. Uh, but I kind of get the vibe. Sure, yeah. <laughs> like something from a Greek myth. Suddenly, I'm a powerful producer, and the world is laid out at my feet, and I can't touch it. Ugh. What a prick. He's like <laughs> that. That is the ultimate power move of like. Rooting around on your wife for the better part of twenty years, and then blaming the patriarchy, <laughs> yeah. like, oh, so good. This this has been happening more and more. Oh, if the system were in place for me to be able to do this, I wouldn't have been able to. Do- I'm so sad about it. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. I'm so sad. Anyway, this is this has been a thing. It, it, it's been happening more and more of late, where people like tout themselves as feminists and they they love these particular ideals, and then somebody comes out and goes. Hey, you sexually assaulted me that time, and then the, yeah. everything they said has just kind of been scorched. Mm. I mean, this isn't to take away from some of the strong female characters that he has created. Sure, right. Because okay. obviously he has. But it's just, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just well, not, very, know, it's not very nice to hear. Yeah, it's. It, I've heard all sorts of weird stuff about him. Like, not that specifically, but like, like odd behavior. Like, apparently, like in, you know, when he made Buffy, yeah. there would be like, uh, He'd get into a disagreement with like one of the actors, and then he would just cut all their scenes. Like they get okay. they get like one scene an episode. Like in I think the last season of Buffy. Do you know, remember Anya? You didn't really watch Buffy. No. Right? There was a character called Anya who was a demon 
who became like trapped in the in a human body. Right. And like the last apparently he got into some disagreement with her on the set or like, you know, something and so she's in the last season she's got like one scene an episode. But right. she he didn't fire her, so she had to come to set every day. And just stand around. And just stand around so she could do a one scene and then it'd be like, I'll be here doing research. I'll see you, see you later. Oh, God, no, okay. I don't know. Yeah. But any, I don't know if any of those are true. But, yeah. Mm. All right. Anyway, I just think that's... It'll be interesting if the Batgirl film still... Or is he doing Batgirl or Batwoman? I can't remember. Oh, it's Batgirl. Batgirl. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I guess he's still going to do it. She, I don't know, yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's Hollywood. I mean, I mean you, can, you, can, you can separate these things, you know what I mean? Like a, a person who does... I mean, it's... It's it's a pri- it's his private life, you know what I mean. I guess that's so true. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. really you know who are we to say or judge or what if any of this is true and who knows? Like I said, two. <laughs> what sides. is life anyway? What is life? Yeah. Want to talk about Batman? We're unqualified to talk about this anyway. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Uh, Matt Reeves said this. Uh, I mean, also people make mistakes. That's true. But sixteen years. Yeah. But yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? yeah. And I think it's the stringing somebody along, which is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I'd, exactly. People make mistakes, but for. 20 years worth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, know, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, it, it does happen in relationships. Yeah. I'm giving myself an out, Mason. <laughs> no, no, it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know what I mean, though? Like, yeah. it does happen, but you're right. Yeah. Just it's in case long... you accidentally sleep with Andy Signore. <laughs> yeah, that's right. When you go to Hollywood, I get it. Yeah, no, I, I understand. He seems like a handsome man. He's probably he's probably getting, he's probably lifting weights and, and <laughs> on a diet as well. I to impress you. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, Matt Reeves says that says this about uh, the Batman. We said this a while back, and yep. people went bananas. When Warner Brothers approached me, they said, "Look, it's a standalone. It's not part of the extended universe." Yep. And people took that as, which I can understand that this is this is a Batman that is separate from the Ben Affleck Batman. They're going to recast it. Affleck's yep. out. He's out every week, isn't yeah, it's he? True, That's yeah. what we're hearing. Yeah, yeah. I do get the feeling that he doesn't really want to do it. Oh, absolutely. Because of the rumors we're having, yeah. getting, but. Hey, but then it turns out he clarified. He was like, no, I was just saying that it's its own movie in terms of it stands alone from the there's others. There's not going to be any, there's not going to be plot elements from Justice no. League or, or Wonder Woman or anything that, it, or Man of Steel or Batman Superman that are going to be impinging on this story. It's going to be separate. Yes. But it's in that universe. It's it in that universe. It exists in the universe. Yeah. This, is, this is from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Even though Casey Affleck last week said that Ben Affleck probably wasn't going to do it. But also, like Casey Affleck can shut up too. <laughs> Throw him in the bin with Joss Whedon, if you ask me. But also, like they're brothers, but maybe they don't hang out all the time. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like if somebody said to me, "Hey, what fire station is your brother currently working at?" I'd, well, I'm not going to say it, but sure. I wouldn't be a hundred percent. I'd be like, yeah, "I'm right. fairly certain it's this," but yeah, maybe it's yeah. this. Yeah. So Randy Matt- Quaid doesn't know what Dennis Quaid's up to all the time. Yeah, that's probably intentional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. So, uh, no, so it's its own story. Anything else you want to add to that? No. Nah. Good, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that was, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so the, I don't know. Yeah. Ben yeah. Affleck's in, he's not in, who knows? Who does bloody know? Mm. All right. We've got ready for another ad? Oh, sure, yeah. It's about Casper mattresses. Always ready. Whatever, whatever, Blue Apron. <laughs> who, who are Blue Apron? I don't even know. Casper Delicious is a- food. Pfft, who even knows? You can't sleep I'm on tired. A, you can't sleep on what food. What can I do? I'm, I'm a, yeah, okay, good. Good segue. Can't sleep on food. Excellent. That's their tagline. Casper is an obsessively engineered mattress at a shockingly fair price. Mason has one. It combines memory foams to create an award-winning sleep surface with just the right amount of sink and bounce. Correct? Yeah, that's exactly how I'd say it too. <laughs> with over 20,000 reviews at an average of 4.8 stars. That's quite hard to get, by the way. That's right. Yeah. It's quickly becoming the internet's favorite mattress. On well, the that, internet too, it is. Yeah. Because there'll be, there's there's contrarians just out there. And this is like, a, I, I liked it, but the colour, <laughs> didn't like the colour. And this isn't just Casper's website. It's wide, I don't understand. <laughs> this is also Amazon and Google reviews. Oh, the, so the, the worst. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they do free shipping to US and Canada, mm. and they also have a 100-night risk-free in your own home. If you don't love it, they'll pick it up and refund you everything. Comes in a little box. Comes in a little box. Cut open the box and it unfolds. You did it. Sproing. Sproing. It's dev- uh, designed, developed, and assembled in the US of A. Uh, we have a promo code. If you go to casper.com slash theweeklyplanet and use the offer code theweeklyplanet, it's fifty dollars off the mattress, nice. which is a lot of dollars. That is a lot of, of dollars. Very reasonably and they're cheap mattress. already. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, casper.com slash weekly planet offer code the weekly planet. Do you want to do the another ad now, and then we have, we do don't have to do an ad oh, later? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, be back to back ads. Yes, back to back ads. Okay, let's do it. 
Harry's razors is a good razor. Yeah, I love it. Do them. you like shaving, Mason? After a good night's sleep. I'm done with sleep. <laughs> it's time to shave. Get, time to get out there. That's right. That's uh, what my alarm says. It's a recording of me from the previous. I record it fresh every night and I get, wake up every morning. It's like, you're done with sleep. It's time to shave. <laughs> get up, idiot. Uh, so what I like about the razors in particular, they've, they stay sharp for a long time. A long time. Uh, I don't know specifically the time, but I'm, I'm, I don't know how many blades I've used, but it's very few. And I've, I've been used very using, few. Yeah. Yeah, and like I've like got. They a, gave us an introductory. I'm, I'm not a. I don't shave. You know, I don't have yeah. to shave my whole face. But our introductory package mm. that we got when we started, I'm still on it. Yeah, yeah. Doing the neck. Yeah, doing the and neck. the touch ups. The t- neck and the touch ups. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, if you and, and they're so confident in their blades, Mason, they're going to give us a give not us the listeners a free <laughs> trial set if you go to harrys.com slash weekly planet and you just pay three dollars for shipping. And the reason these guys uh, started this is because. They were sick of paying store bought prices for razors, which are insane. And mm-hmm. they're always in Australia, they're locked behind a thing. Like so behind a little counter, yeah. Because they cost so much, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But these are very reasonable, especially what, like I said, it's a free trial set for only the cost of shipping, which is which is three bucks. So if you go to what is it? Uh, so in your trial set, sorry, you get a weighted er- er- ergonomic razor handle, five precision engineered blades with lubricated strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel, good shave gel, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, and a, and a tr- uh, travel blade cover. And if you go to harrys.com slash weekly planet, you can get that right now. That's harrys.com slash weekly planet. Nice. All right. End of ads. Oh, uh, we'll try not to do three <laughs> in the future. <laughs> yep. But it's not my fault to be fair or your fault not to name any names. Claire. I was going to say the patriarchy. Yeah, it was also the the patriarchy. It's the week to blame the patriarchy, so. (laughs) Good. Excellent. What do we got here? Uh, Mason, the topic for this week is box office bombs because it briefly came up last week. And we were like, why not? And also the title of this episode will be 200 box office bombs. So people will be like, 200 box office bombs. bombs. That's a lot of bombs to talk about, maybe. I mean, it it won't be high quality conversation, but they'll they'll be talking a lot, so. Do you want a rating system for this? In Uh, terms of like... I, I wrote down something roughly, not really. Uh-huh. It's like if it bombs, will they all bomb? The response would be, yeah, that makes sense. Or, <laughs> what? That's so weird. I love it. <laughs> okay, is that, good, okay, is that good enough? That's really good. Okay. What a delightful great. rating system. <laughs> yeah. So, do you mind if I kick it off? Let's do it. Because the one that I remember specifically, because I was a kid at the time, but there was a lot of news behind it. In a way, was, you're still a kid. I'm still a kid at heart. Mm-hmm. Not obviously the way I look or act or, you know, just my demeanour and how gruff I am. Yeah. Just hate your my craggy, bones are brittle. Your craggy features. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. grey hair. Your hair just blows away in the wind. I've got a kid of my own. you got a club foot. My dad's old. Yeah. <laughs> Bone spurs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. You're turning to dust on a beach. <laughs> what else? What other things do old people do? Porridge. Yeah, Porridge. <laughs> You're slowly yeah. transforming into an old tree. All my friends, a gnarled old tree. All my friends are dying. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Waterworld, though. Oh yeah. I remember hearing about this not doing well at the time. Uh-huh. Like as they were filming it, people were like, "Kevin Costner's doing the worst thing a person could do. He's making this. He's built a set out in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, right. Yeah, and that's uh, just it's like Mad Max on water for some reason. So they've got to ship everybody out there every day or whatever. Yeah, uh-huh. and it's this insane. $175 million budget, which is crazy in 95 when this... Yeah, right. Was it 95? I think it was 95 when this yes. came out. And there was a lot of things... Like, there's been stories since how... Like, we've talked about this, how he, he thought he was a bit bald in certain scenes, so he'd CGI his hair in. Yeah, right. It really is... You see, it is a kind of a... Because it's off the back of Dances with Wolves. It is a kind of a... a it's a vanity project. Aren't all... Most of his work is vanity project, yeah. I, re- I feel. Yeah. You know? So well, after this, he did the Postman, which is which was another box office bomb, not quite as bad because he wasn't allowed to do that one on water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, well, do you remember much about this at the time? I remember they called it Fish Tar, like in, like Ishtar, which was also a terrible box office. I, bomb. I'm not familiar with the story of Ishtar. What also, Kevin's that? Gate, which was oh uh, yes, yeah. Kevin's Gate. Yeah, I got yeah. that on my list. Oh, you mentioned as well. So. We're gonna are we gonna mention the top five as we go? Yeah, well, let's mention. We're know, gonna rattle because, them off because yeah, well, we should rattle them off because they we're probably not gonna mention the. Well, we will. Like, there's a there's a top. You know, it's constantly changing, but there's often a top five, adjusted for inflation, top five bombs of all time. But I don't think we've seen. I reckon we'll look at the list and we'll be like, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen yeah, that. Exactly. So it's gonna be <laughs> yeah. a little bit weird if we're like, well, this episode's the top ten box office bombs. 
I mean, we've seen two of them. <laughs> yeah. But I assume they're bad. I mean, why would I watch Alexander? Yeah. You know, real, realistically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, what do you remember about this? Uh, first of all, it's not that bad. It's very expensive. For It doesn't look as... A lot of it is, why is this filmed on water? Like out... Oh, sure, yeah. Like, because a lot of it is... Like, it's a water world, James. No, I understand that, but like... You could do it in a tank or just with, oh, with, true, yeah. with pools. You know what yeah. I mean? You could make it look like it was in water. You could do it in Sea World. You could do it in Sea you World. Could empty out a, you could drain out a whale or whatever and just put Kevin Costner in there. Yeah, put you Kevin know? Costner in a drained out whale. That's right. That's your water world for you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you could have, exactly. I rem- so there was a, the story is the, the, the Does girl. Does Kevin Costner think he's an auteur of some sort? I think he did think he was an auteur. Right. But I think he's had too many misses. Yeah. I don't think he's a bad actor at all. Have you seen Mr. Brooks? He's good at Mr. Brooks. He's good, man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, the one where you bring a knife and then they bring a gun. Untouchable, yeah, sure, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's in that, isn't he? <laughs> yes. The baseball I was one. I say Field of Dreams there. The baseball one. <laughs> bring a knife, bring a gun. Bring a it's baseball. Bring a knife, <laughs> bring a gun day at the, at the baseball field. Field of Dreams. <laughs> I haven't seen that one, but that's the one where he's, his dad plays ghost baseball in a cornfield with him. Sure, why not? And everybody who's like, who's. Everybody's affected by it if you're a father or have a child. So I don't think I can watch it. You, can't, you wouldn't dare, would you? <laughs> no. That's right. I Turn it into a blubbery mess. I couldn't handle it. Uh, it's an okay film though, right? What do you think of it? Waterworld. Did, did you see it at the yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You went saw it. I didn't, yeah. It's, it's not good. It's no good. I, I saw it on... What, what fascinates me is that he then took another stab at essentially the same movie with The Postman. <laughs> yes, I know, right? <laughs> Weird. I, I saw it on VHS and I remember the end bit where he has to get the girl who's got the map to dry land because yes. she's got it tattooed on her back. Uh-huh. And he's in a hot air balloon mm-hmm. and then he... He just ties a regular rope around his legs and he leaps out and he grabs her and he bungee jumps out. It's a regular, regular rope. rope. It would have yeah. torn his feet off. <laughs> That's right. So, and I remember as a kid just laughing and laughing. Well, I mean, if it didn't, if it didn't, if it didn't tear his feet off, it would have just gone slack. Right. Like, yeah. He would have hit the, hit the <laughs> grabbed her, and then the balloon would have just floated off, and he would have been at the. It would have. It would have shucked the skin off his feet oh, like absolutely. it was corn. Just mm. ugh. And then, because, and also, there's like three bad guys coming together at the same time on jet skis. Uh huh. You remember? And then they all crash together for yeah. for mm-hmm. whatever reason. Yeah. Dennis Hopper's missing an eye. He's a fish man with mutants. Have we talked enough about this? I think so. Okay. Here, here's some. Here's a little fact for you. Yeah. It's, not, it's Academy Award nominated film. Uh, best sound mixing. <laughs> Technical Oscars. That's so uh, surprise. Yeah, okay, right. uh, it was nominated for best science fiction film and best costumes at the Saturn Awards. The awards where anybody can be nominated for anything. The Sega Saturn Awards. Correct. That's right. That's great. They're given away by the last remaining Sega Saturn, which has gained <laughs> sentience. Uh, it was nominated for best visual effects by oh, yeah. the BAFTAs. Yep. Okay. And at the Golden Raspberries, it was nominated for worst picture, worst actor, worst director, and worst supporting actor, Dennis Hopper, who won. <laughs> So congratulations, the late Dennis Hopper. Well done, Dennis Hopper. And you did it only a couple of years after the Super Mario Brothers movie. It's true. Well, you probably won the yeah. same award. Yeah. yeah. Hey, remember when you were an easy rider? No, you don't because you're dead. It's cruel. <laughs> I like Dennis Hopper. He's Me great. too, yeah. yeah. That is cruel. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, there's things in those, that movie, just quickly, that they should have explored more, I feel. Yes. There's a bit where he goes fishing and he takes gets like a giant sea creature. Uh-huh. Remember you see it come out of the water? Oh, yes. And, there's, and he's a mutant. But is he the only kind of one that you really see? Like, that seems like an interesting aspect to that world. He's a man that can breathe underwater, but what do the other ones do? And also, how how far in the future is it? Yeah, I don't know. Because maybe in 100,000 years, humanity will develop gills. Yes. But in... (laughs) Is, I guess it's I guess it's because the polar ice caps mountain is probably a nuclear like maybe, war. Yeah, okay, maybe he's a know. nuclear mutant. All right, that's fine. Yeah, what do you want? Okay, so here's the number five biggest box office Ready? bomb of all time, allegedly. This is according to Entertainment Cheat Sheet. Yeah. Dot com or My something. Favorite. Yeah. Dot com. It's uh the 2002's The Adventures of Pluto Nash. Ugh, that yeah. made seven million dollars. There you go. It cost a hundred. Is that right? Uh yeah. It it cost uh about a hundred million dollars. Marketing, marketing of twenty million dollars. I think that's because they knew. Oh, maybe, but I don't know. I feel that. No, I feel that that's what they've said it cost. See, I think they knew what it was. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. right. Uh, yeah, and seven point one million dollars at the box office. Um, How is that possible? Yeah, that's astounding. And is easily the worst performing film of Murphy's career. 
That is saying something. Yeah, I know, right? He's meet Dave. Meet. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Norbert. He, Norbert. I mean, he's he's been like. Why do they keep giving him he, these movies? Because well, Nutty Professor. Yeah, and the clumps. And I guess off the back of Beverly Hills Cop, like, and he, he wore those leather jumpsuits in Raw, and he said delirious. a lot of really homophobic things. In Boy, the did 80s. he? Yeah, yeah, that's true. It was a different time. And also, I get. You know what? I guess Shrek. Somehow. Was this before Shrek or around the time? Because it's no, 2002. I, I, I just Shrek meant why he still gets roles. Oh, yeah. I, I don't, the thing is, I don't think he's a bad actor. I just don't think he can carry a film. I don't think anybody's going to see an Eddie Murphy film anymore. But that's the thing. I would. If, yeah, if, if it was something good. If it was something good. That's the thing. <laughs> like, But it's, it astounds me that he can't pick something good anymore. Well, What's I, going on there? There's a Paul Shear uh, How Did This Get Made episode because he was on Meet Dave. He was in it. That's I think right. a lot of him and was cut, cut out. he got cut out. He was the butt or yeah, something. Yeah, he was the butt. He was like Ensign Butt. And he was talking about... That's, that's Paul Shear, not... Paul Shear, yeah. yeah. That's a great episode. You should, you should check it out. I've but checked it out. Not you, Mason. You're not the only one listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I've been telling you these things in confidence. <laughs> But, uh, no, he talks about that how... That cake is for 198 delightful <laughs> chats we've had in our life. That's what I thought this was. <laughs> so, it does smell really good, the cake. I can smell it, does, it from doesn't here. It? And but it's I, like I can, three feet Yeah, away. I can eat maybe one slice of that, then I think I'm done. Okay. Anyway. Well, I can't because of carbs. Because of carbs, that's yeah, right. Yeah. We'll feed the rest of the dog. Yeah. Dogs love rainbow cake. <laughs> and carbs. Mm. What was I saying? Yeah, he talked about that that particular movie and Eddie Murphy is just surrounded by handlers and yes men. He's yeah. got no concept of the real world. That's true. And like apparently for, for set, like the car would roll right up and he would step out and then he would just be standing where he needs to stand. Yeah. That's completely unnecessary. He's a human man. That's true. He yeah. can move around. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's also why, I mean, you see, he came back for Saturday Night Live, you know, the 40th anniversary or what it was recently. And he yeah. did a monologue. It was just no good because he hasn't he hasn't done anything like right, it. it's not. Right, I don't yeah. think it's his fault. There's all this talk that he's going to come back to stand up. How can he? He hasn't done anything. That's true, like, he yeah. hasn't done anything. He hasn't. Ex- you're right. He hasn't experienced yeah. any life. He's been molly molly coddled for forty years or whatever. That's true, so yeah. it's. I feel bad for him if he Same. didn't have millions of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> or does he? He'd have to. Surely. He'd have to. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, he, he's sunk a lot of films, hasn't he? Yep. Yeah. Not nah, good on him though. So that's at least so that's at least a loss of. Well, I can't even remember what happens in Pluto Nash. I haven't seen it. At the end, it's a clone. It's it's a clone of his. Oh, terrific! I'm going to give Pluto Nash a. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm yeah. going to give a water, water world. Yeah, it's kind of a bit weird because it's. No, I think that makes perfect sense. I mean, the budget. I mean, I understand. It, it did. I think it just broke even on VHS. Yeah. But I think in 1995, if you said 175 million dollars. <laughs> no, I think. But even that, if you said, "Hey, Ke- hey, there's a new Kevin Costner film coming out," in yeah. 95, people would be like, "Great." Is Skeet Aldrich in it? Yeah. Is it going to be about sports or being a father or whatever? <laughs> and you're like, "No, no, it's it's set on a, a potentially oh, post-apocalyptic future, and he's got gills." I think people would be like, it's "That's." His- it's his Battlefield Earth. Yeah, people would be like, absolutely not. I, that makes perfect sense to me. Should we talk about Battlefield Earth? Yes. <laughs> John Travolta's... Uh, this is why I hate John Travolta. It's, it's a vanity project. <laughs> it's, uh-huh. a, it's a, sci- it's a um, Scientology novella. Correct. Which has turned into a shit film. Oh, it's, a, it's not a novella. It's a series of... Oh, is it? Oh, no, wait. I'm thinking of... Some other shit. Yeah. Battlefield Earth cost $103 million. Nice. And it lost seventy three million dollars. So nice. <laughs> so that's so that's good. I mean, that's understandable. I remember seeing a trailer for that and going, "Okay, that's I like Star Wars, and there's no Star Wars at the moment." So I'll, yeah, right. I guess I'll. But I I never ended up seeing it. I've seen clips of it. Have you seen it? I've seen Battlefield Earth. Yes. And it's atrocious. I like Barry Pepper. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I genuinely do. Uh-huh. I think yeah. it's good. And Forrest Whitaker's in it too. Yeah, exactly. Is, Aren't yeah. they giant in it? They're like nine feet tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's all achieved using weird angles, and it's filmed at weird angles. Like, there's often just scenes for no reason. Dutch the, tilt. The, yeah, is that a thing? I think that's called Dutch. Where tilt. it's just crooked. Blocking. The screen's crooked. <laughs> Blocking. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Atrocious. Yeah. I don't have anything else to say about that. Anyway, mm. that one makes sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, got got another another box oh, yeah, office okay. blunder, Mason. All right. Well, this is this is apparent, allegedly again. Somebody out, you might be reading a different biggest box office bombs of all time list. I'm not. Okay, you're not reading anything at all. No. Uh, number four is Mars Need Moms. <laughs> 2011's Mars <laughs> yes, Needs Moms. I completely understand why this tanked. estimated loss is 137 million dollars. Computer animated. Disney's uh, had a lot of 
Mrs. Man. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, and luckily like they have billions recent, of dollars. Yeah, like recently. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, this is they did the weird, they did the Robert Zemeckis CGI mocap that everybody hates. Yeah, it's true. So the Polar course, Express. Of co- yeah, of course yeah. this made no money. So this wasn't a Pixar film at all, was it? No, this it was, was Disney uh, yeah. computer animation. Well, there's your mistake yeah, right there. What, you know, the director Simon Wells did the Time Machine, which I quite enjoy. Yeah, right. <laughs> the uh-huh, guys sure. this one. Yeah. It's probably not good, but I yeah. like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't. I did not see this. Who? What kid would go to see a movie? Called Mars Needs Moms. I guess moms bring their kids to Moms it. would bring it, wouldn't they? It's hard to say, <laughs> it's isn't so it? so hard to say. Oh, did it? Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. yeah. So, is Mars... I it even, did it even come to Australia? I think it did. We've had to rename it Mars, names, Mars Needs Moms. Let me check. Hmm. Mars Needs Moms Australian release... Yeah, no, it played here and it was called Moms. There you go. Wow. No wonder it tanked. <laughs> in Australia or, yeah. in, or in general? It's culturally unaware, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it though? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Uh, no, I didn't see it and I never will. Same. Do you want to talk about some other? I got some other Disney ones okay, here. Okay, I'm ready. I'm sure I do. The Lone Ranger. Oh, yes. Which I maintain is fine. I understand why it tanked. Uh-huh. It apparently cost anywhere between 225 and $250 million, which if you see the movie... It's kind of baffling. Like, there's uh-huh. a lot of Johnny Depp running on a ladder across a train. But across how, two that trains. bird headdress. Yeah. That, not cheap. That's a different bird they had to kill every day. <laughs> it's true, yeah. And Johnny Depp <laughs> always wanted a fresh bird. It wasn't even for the film. No. no the, the character wasn't supposed to have it. He just demanded a fresh dead bird in his head every day. He still does it to yeah. this day. <laughs> That's yeah. right. It's under some scarves. <laughs> it lost $260 million. Yeah. I only saw this because I was kind of forced to at the time. Uh-huh. People were like, let's go see this. I'm like, oh, I don't want to. No. And then I was surprised how much I didn't hate it. Mm. Uh, Army action, Hammer's good. What's the action like? It's not bad. It's like Pirates of the Caribbean-ish. Okay. But I would say better in a lot of ways because it kind of makes more sense. Right. So do you think this... this is this is Was this a massive flop because they overspent? I think it's that and I think it's they miss... They miscalculated how much people like Johnny Depp yep. and they also assumed that people would give a fuck about the Lone Ranger. That's very true. I mean, do you remember the only guy... We know. We know. No, don't, don't bring him back. Don't bring back... <laughs> there's a there's a, a Shadow comic book series out now that's very good. Yeah. But it doesn't... Don't... That's low risk. <laughs> yeah, you know that's what right, I mean? Yeah. Print six issues and if nobody reads it, it's fine. You, you make your money back in comicsology. Yeah. But... Don't spend two hundred million dollars on a any of these. The Phantom, no. Don't. The Shadow, no. Green Hornet, no. no. It's out. Exactly. Doc Savage, absolutely not. John Carter, another Disney one. Yep. Don't do it. That's on the list. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, John Carter. That what did? The, see, I think the problem with John Carter was they went. This is going to be the new Avatar. Yeah. Uh, they even didn't call it John Carter of Mars. Apparently, potentially because they had one called Mars Needs Moms. Oh and they yeah. Went, People didn't like, they liked the moms, but they didn't like the Mars. Mars, exactly. So they took, so it's just called John Carter. Yeah. If you we see, like Mars attacks. We didn't like Mars, but we like people being attacked. We like Jack Nicholson <laughs> being attacked. <laughs> we like Pierce Brosnan's head on a little dog. Mm. I haven't seen it. We like Tom Jones running in fear from Martians. <laughs> Matt, uh, a guy who does some editing for me, he does some Caravan of Garbage along mm-hmm. with Ben. He recommended a comic. He sent it to me, uh, which is... Mars Attacks meets Judge Dredd. Nice. Is, which I think maybe we'll, we'll talk, yeah, talk okay, about we that can, at we some can talk point. about that. He, re- he recommended the topic, topic art, cro- comic book crossovers. I mentioned this a, a while back that I was going to I was gonna read and I got to it. It's the Elmer Fudd Batman crossover. Oh, yeah, you did mention it's it. You really said it was good. great. It's yeah. great, yeah. You said that, Mason, Did I mention already? it on the show? You said okay. it on the show. It's real good. Oh, one of our, it wasn't one of our private conversations. Oh, that okay, was on great. the show, yeah. Oh, all right then. Uh, yeah, did you see John Carter? No. I have it and I started it and I'm like, this is fine. Okay. And then I didn't finish it. Well, then it's not fine, is it? <laughs> no, it, it could be fine if you, you could not finish it. Mm. Mm. No. I think they also banked... I think it speaks volumes. Yeah. They banked or backed the wrong horse in terms, terms of an actor. I was going to say they probably should have put Channing Tatum, but then again, he did Jupiter Ascending and that did nothing <laughs> Correct, for, yes. For, uh, for that. Mm. What are we talking about? I think the, the mis- a lot of the mistakes we are seeing is people executives vastly overestimate any star how, like how many yeah. how many people we've had this discussion before one of our 198 amazing discussions <laughs> that I thought were just between us but that th- how many actors would you be like I'll see every single one of their movies regardless none none exactly right <laughs> zero actors yeah, exactly I think there would have been a time when I would have seen like every Ewan McGregor film sure right 
Oh, I guess if I was young, if I was alive then, probably De Niro in like the 70s and sure, 80s. Sure, right, yeah. But uh-huh. now, no. Nothing. Like I like Chris Pratt, but I didn't see Passengers. Yeah. You know? And there, there's so much stuff that's obviously just paycheck work. Yeah, like the movie Paycheck with correct. Ben Affleck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. What else you got? Just make just make better movies, all right? God. <laughs> Me? Yeah, you. All right. Uh, all right, number three, allegedly, Cutthroat Island. Also from 1995. <laughs> What's going on? It was just... What did what won that year? Forrest re- Gump? Was that rel- the highest? Relatively likeable actors yeah. doing weird genre films. Gina Davis and... Who's the other guy? Uh, Jeff Bridges or Jeff Daniels? Jeff Daniels, probably. <laughs> I don't... Hang on. Okay. I'm, I'm going to check out what the highest grossing films of 1995 were. I bet okay. it's like Polo, Polo 11. Bet, I Polo bet 13, it... sorry. It is. There you What's go. It's number three. So it was Toy Story, Batman Forever. I was going to say it was going to be a Batman yeah, movie. Apollo 13, Pocahontas. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, go on. So what we'll, were we'll, we'll, both of us? Ace Ventura was number five nice. for Nature Calls. Nice. Uh, let me think. Uh, well, Cutthroat Island, Island uh, estimated lost $137 million. I reckon all these figures are... They're lowballing as well. Oh, I yeah, because much more. Well, that's the thing about this: studios never release the exact figures on this stuff. Yeah, particularly in terms of marketing. Mm. Uh, it didn't even do as well as Mr. Holland's Opus, yeah. which was number thirteen and got eighty-four million dollars, eighty-two million dollars. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Congo pa- did better. Wow. Yeah, but that had laser gorillas or something. <laughs> it did. Yeah, talking laser gorillas. No, it had. Gorillas being lasered. That's true. You're mixing yeah. up your gorillas and Whatever, lasers. I'll take any combination of talking gorillas <laughs> and lasers. Um, apparently, the Guinness Book of Records used to have a largest box office loss uh, column. Oh yeah, but it, and was it bought out by MGM or something? Must so have been. Yeah. yeah. But it, so MGM's Cutthroat Island was. Oh, uh, was it really? It was, yeah, M- MGM's Cutthroat Island. Uh, but that was that was the top spot until they they, they cut it out. So it earned ten oh, million dollars at the box office. 10 million, 10 million of 150 off yeah the budget was 98 million along with 17 million in marketing expenses probably much more that's horrendous adjusted, adjusted for inflation 137 million dollars do you One, think they went people sort of liked hook it's time for pirates yeah it's, people loved hook let's do pirates without any magic or whatever <laughs> or fun or fun is exactly. it bad i don't know i like gina day i remember long I like, kiss good night long kiss good night yeah. yeah exactly yeah mm mm-hmm. mhm the show where she's the president <laughs> was oh, yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah President know. Gina. Yeah, President Gina. Mm-hmm. Great. What was that, number what? That was number three. Do you want to talk about stealth? Yeah. Lost, I mean, no. Lost $96 million in 2005. The plot, Jamie Foxx, they kind of hushed that because I think that was around the time of like Ray and Collateral and they were like just... That's right, kinda... yeah. No, I th- or didn't they... I think, it, wasn't it Ray and Collateral and then they're like, we have this on the shelf? We may as yeah, well. you might we got, be We right. got Stealth on the shelf. Stealth so on the shelf. So let's just throw it out there and yeah. see if it also picks up some steam and then it didn't. No. Uh, a sentient fighter jet then becomes more sentient when it gets hit by lightning. That's right. And it kills Josh Lucas maybe? Yeah. Or kills Jamie Foxx? <sighs> Who knows? I haven't seen it. I've no, seen no. bits of it. I don't remember. <laughs> uh-huh. That was also the the era that we saw everything and we didn't see it. Yeah, wow. Yeah, <laughs> that was about one blind spot. <laughs> and Catwoman. Yeah, we got two blind spots. That's true, yeah, yeah. No, uh, I think at the time I'm surprised it didn't do better because that's the kind of shit that came out then. It was yeah. like, imagine a jet, but it's extreme and it knows where you live or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you don't think? Uh, I can picture the trailer. Yeah, you know, I think I think at two thousand and two we were already sick of that. Yeah, we were okay. sick of that aesthetic. So by five, it's like no. Yeah, yeah. I, I I feel like we were. I was certainly already just exhausted by that. Yeah, something extreme has gone even more extreme. <laughs> no, I yeah, I'm not surprised at all that that's okay. Ain't. Fair enough. Yeah, didn't have any, like it didn't have any personality to it. The plane. Well, it's a robot. It. No, Mason. but the whole, the whole thing. Okay, yeah. But probably. the robot specifically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. But doesn't the robot turn good and then helps them like, what, stealth? Like, what if Jamie Foxx is at a, you know, he's, he's home at his house and he leans out the window and he sees the stealth, <laughs> like all sinister <laughs> outside his window and, he's, and the stealth's like, shh. <laughs> That'd be spooky, wouldn't it? Oh, do you want to hear about number two? Uh, yeah. I, I, do, we, do we want to jump to two straight away or do you want more Let's give, give me, Yeah, give me more. Okay, I'll give you the third. Oh, no, I think this might be on the list. I'm going to avoid it. Uh, Evan Almighty, I'll do this one. Okay, sure. I lost $88 million. This, to me, feels like it should have made a lot of money. Yeah, right. It's, apparently, it's not very good. Oh, right, But sure. they took 
Steve Carell's character from the first Bruce Almighty, which did very well, mm-hmm. they pumped $175 million into it. Yes. A lot of animal stuff, so, you know, it's yeah, dangerous. Yeah, right, okay, that is, yeah. It's, it's, Real it's, animals or CGI animals? You know, uh, both. So it's expensive and it's it's hard to wrangle for, and, for yeah, many reasons. Yeah, don't work with children or animals. Yeah, exactly. And Steve Carell was also, I think at the time he was doing like The Office or, or maybe not, maybe he was, he'd done 40-Year-Old Virgin. He was he was coming up. He probably, yeah, right. He would have at least done The um, Anchorman and 40-Year-Old Virgin. Yeah, right. And it just... No, nobody saw it huh like it just tanked and he's he's in it he's got a big Moses beard in it because not, he's not no, he's, beard, he's not God in this he's he's, he's a Noah's he's Ark a Noah's kind of character guy, yeah okay, and, that, right. and the the elephants help him build the ark because huh. there's a big flood cool so I remember seeing Evan Almighty and being like that's is fine. it a case of Bruce Almighty all the jokes have been done do you yeah, think they I, really I, rang out all yeah. the potential in Bruce Almighty? I think also they took it, that's why they took it in a different direction. Because Bruce Almighty is, he can do literally everything. Yeah. Evan Almighty is, he has to build a boat. <laughs> True, stakes are lower. Yeah. But you can't do that with a sequel. You can't make the stakes lower in a sequel. No, you so. certainly can't, yeah. Mm. So that's... that's and also, that it's, a, it's a movie universe in which there exists a god who appears to be benevolent in some way. Yeah. So where's there's no stakes? No. You could just get Jim Carrey back to fix everything. They could. Like it's not like it's not like it's going to end with oh I didn't make the boat in time and then it's just twenty minutes of people <laughs> drowning in the most horrific ways and just you know just a father going like no and his <laughs> children have fallen off a bridge and they're drowning. And he's like ah oh, no and then he shoots himself. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine if it went in a real weird direction at the oh, end. Oh, I would see that. Oh would- yeah. Yeah. That, that might because I would tell, I would be, you need to see this. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you anything about yeah, it. Look, Trust me. Don't walk out. You're yeah. going to be a little bored. <laughs> You're going to be a little bored until the third act. And then it's going to yeah. be the best thing you've ever seen. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, incredible. Yeah. Anyway, it's probably shit. Yeah. Probably how it turned out. Exactly. Apparently, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to do number two? Okay, number two. 2013. Yep. Estimated loss of $151 47 million. Dollars. 47 Ronin. Yeah, yeah. There you go, yeah. It's not that bad. Okay. It also doesn't look that expensive. No, right? Have you seen it? It looks... No, I haven't, but it looks. It just looks desolate and filmed in a forest. Yes, that's that's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Well, I, I read something about this because I was... And also, who else is in it besides Keanu Reeves? No, nope, they're all Japanese. They're all Japanese, exactly. Like, well, I, I, because I saw those numbers and I went, I don't understand this. I need to find out why this costs so much. Yeah. There were a lot of reshoots and there was trouble with it. Right. But I think one of the reasons is because they filmed everything in Japanese because they had a lot of Japanese actors, so they could familiarize themselves, familiarize themselves with the language and the scenes, and then they filmed a bit in English. You are doubling the time spent yeah, on right. set doing yeah. that. Uh-huh. Even if it's rehearsal and you're not filming, which you yeah. probably, that, that's, you. what are you doing? Yeah, that's madness. <laughs> yeah. Also, you could just... Just say, this is what it is. Yeah, you could even just have them all speak Japanese. That's also fine. And then, like, if you know, we just watched The Defenders. Yeah. There's characters in that, one of the characters, Bakuto, mm. he only speaks Japanese. Yeah. And all the other characters just understand him and speak English and he understands them. I don't think it's Bakuto. I think it's a different guy. Is it? But yeah. yeah. I know, the guy gets beheaded. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Go on. Anyway. I, uh, you, no, we'll no, get tweets. No, Baku, Bakuto <laughs> speaks Japanese. He probably does, he but does. he's the one from Iron Fist. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> but what, what I'm saying is, You've already forgotten. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll get it back. What I'm saying is... No, I meant it, Defenders. All right. That you have to... That you can just have the characters speak in whatever language they're most comfortable with and just have all the characters just go... Like, it's not... We're not like, what magic is this? We get it. We just assume they all talk in whatever language they talk in and yes. the other characters understand them. It's fine. Exactly. And it's okay with to give them subtitles. It's fine. This also this isn't a movie, I but a think. movie for two hundred twenty-five million dollars doesn't do subtitles for the whole thing. I guess that's true because no one's got people like it. When people but that's what I'm anyway. talking about. Like it's not, it's also not a movie that looks like it's going to appeal to people who go to Transformers. No. So you'd go okay. Well, it's a movie set whenever. I in, mean, you get your weeaboos, and you, you get, get some weeaboos, and they're all on board with subtitles. They love a sub. Yeah. They hate a dub. <laughs> Subs no dubs, baby. Subs no dubs. Mm-hmm. You get your Keanu Reeve heads, you know, and that's... Uh, you get your Reeve, your Reeve heads, Reeve yeah, heads, exactly. That's, yeah. Uh, that's exactly. But I remember at the time thinking, I will see that. 
uh, but I just won't go and see it because I think it also came out in December and I'm like, eh, December, right? <laughs> yeah. Christmas, I've got other things to do. Mm. Yeah. So what do you think that's, are you surprised? No. Okay, yeah. Not makes, at all. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it's smarter to put Keanu Reeves in a movie like John Wick, low mm. budget, Yeah. you know, uh, that kind of situation. He's, he's not a guy who can carry a $200 million movie that's not The Matrix. That's Speaking true. of The Matrix, what? the Wachowskis oh, yeah, have okay. had a string of flops yeah. since The, the Matrix. Matrix trilogy. Yes. Uh, starting with Speed Racer, Cloud Atlas, then Jupiter Ascending. They're all weird and terrible in their own ways, probably. I've heard Cloud Atlas is quite an achievement. I haven't kind of... In making Tom Hanks look Japanese? I don't think he is. I think Hugh Grant is Japanese. Oh, okay. I don't think they, they Japanese up Tom Hanks. Oh, all right. But yeah, okay. But, <laughs> All right. <laughs> but uh, or maybe he is. They definitely change his face Yeah, for something. Because it's interesting because the Wachowskis, you know, their their first outing was co- quite groundbreaking in, a, in you know, a lot of technical ways. You're talking about the, before The Matrix even? No, I mean The Matrix. Right, okay. The first one I care about. I should have specified. <laughs> um, and then everyone since then has been, I guess... T- has have the, all the rest been technical, technically groundbreaking in some way? Like Speed Racer was all... Speed Racer was all green screen. All green screen. And that's interesting because it's yeah. like a cartoon. Yeah, but nobody cared. But nobody cared. Uh, I mean, that movie's upsetting to watch. But I've never seen it. It's bad. There are people that, who defend it. Well, Cloud Atlas is an unfilmable book. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Jupiter Ascending is just bees and dog men and hover See, it's hoverbricks. on Netflix now. I should check it out. Yeah. Would you recommend it? I haven't seen. I've only, oh, okay, seen, right. I've only seen like recaps of people making fun of it. Okay, so right. I don't. Yeah, maybe I should check that out. Then yeah, instead. please yeah. do. Yeah. yeah, I feel I also should see Valerian before I see. I Jupiter do want to see Valerian. Yeah, because mm. I've heard very, very mixed things. Same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll get a tweet. Well, m- more when it was out, and you yes. probably got the same where someone's like, "You've got to see it. It's amazing," and the next person like, "You have to see it. This is the worst thing ever." Right. Right. So right. it's who knows. This one blew my mind. All right. Because I've never heard of it. Supernova, James Spader, Angela Bassett. It's from like the 90s. Uh-huh. Lost $92 million. It looks kind of like Event Horizon, but not as good. It, I feel if... It cannot be surprising if you if it's a box office bomb and you're like, I never heard of this. <laughs> no, I mean, it's surprising that it exists. Like, I feel... Because it came out in like 99. Right, right, right. It's Trim Spader as well. Oh, wow. The yeah. best Spader. Yeah, so... Uh, but I did, yeah. It's the it's the the villain is the the bully from Can't Hardly Wait. <laughs> so the villain isn't a supernova. No. Oh well. No, it's uh. I did, I watched the trailer to be like I. I feel like I should at the time. I feel like I should have known what this is. Yeah, right. Because it's kind of in my wheelhouse, but I'd uh-huh. never heard of it. Have you heard of it? No, never. Oh, interesting. No. Okay. But also, it's got that generic kind of title. Yes, it like, does. Yeah. Yeah. Treasure Planet upsets me because that one's good. Yeah. Lost $109 million, but it came up off the back end of um, the death of 2D animation in, for Disney. Sure, right, yeah, right. Yeah, they right. planned sequels and everything. It's really good. I, well, I We talked about it in that Disney episode. That's right. And you can't talk Treasure Planet, Mason, without Titan AE. <laughs> yes. Are you familiar with that? The yes. Matt Damon space <laughs> adventure. Oh, yeah. Animated. Uh, have you seen it? No. I have. How'd that go? Don't remember. Nice. <laughs> so, Great. I remember Creed did the soundtrack. Uh-huh. I think Creed High is either in the trailer or in the movie. Yep. Uh-huh. So picture that if you will. Nice. I bet after Treasure Planet came out, the people who were making Titan AE, AE went, oh no. Mm, <laughs> like they yeah. knew what was coming. Yeah, right. They were well aware. What's next though? Look, I've, look, I've got two, I've got number, two number ones here. Okay. One's an independent film. Uh, uh, let's go, let's go with, um, let's go with big budget. Because I probably know that what that is. Yeah, okay. What is it? Well, what I've got here... Biggest, biggest bloody, big, big budget. Hang on, where are we? Uh, bloody, where are we? Is Heaven's uh, Gate good? Surely not. Yeah, I can't right. remember. Sorry, go on. I've seen it, but I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, The 13th Warrior. Yeah. 1999's The 13th Warrior. I haven't seen it. Uh-huh. What was the numbers on that? Because I've got that one oh, here. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, baby. Uh, so, it, it based on a Michael Crichton novel. So they were shooming oh, us money in the bank. It's a, it's yeah. an awful. It was the nineties. It was the nineties. They come off like, the back of Congo. Everyone was feeling good. Gorillas with lasers. They're like, <laughs> is this warrior going to have a laser or a talking gorilla? And they're like, no. And they're like, oh no, we've we've made we've made a terrible mistake. Um, so this was nineteen ninety nine, hundred and sixty million dollars. Yep. 
So this was the book was called Eaters of the Dead. Eaters of the Dead, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they changed it. The movie was called that, wasn't it? I mean, it yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it earned sixty one point seven million dollars at the box office, which isn't bad. I mean, that's still a hundred, you know, hundred million dollars loss. Uh, and when you adjust for inflation, that's one hundred eighty three million dollars. That's the loss. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But you'd think, um, you'd, you'd think Antonio Banderas would. Antonio carry- Banderas, <laughs> based on the last Michael Crichton novel you'd ever think to adapt. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, even the fact that they thought, we're going to call this Eaters of Death and we're going to put, I've got the budget here, and we're going to yeah, put $160 million into directed it. Directed by John McTiernan. Originally. Oh, right. Because he was kicked and Michael Crichton took over. Oh, no. You know, that famous director, see, Michael the, Crichton. Yeah, see, that's exactly it. So I, uh, my feeling would be on this that they went, okay, well, we've got Jurassic Park work because it had dinosaurs in the modern day yeah and let's try another mic let's congo it's got gorillas that's almost as good you can say from the mind of the guy who did jurassic park from the guy congo from one of the dudes who made <laughs> jurassic park but then like and then they're, they're sort of running out of juice here but they're like okay let's try another one and then mctiernan's brought in and he's like okay but then i would imagine Crichton comes in. i don't know anything about michael Crichton, but i would imagine i know he's, he's like, dead i imagine he's, he'd always been like Every single one of these is as good as the last. Well, he did Sphere. He did Sphere, that's true. <laughs> he did Westworld. Oh, yeah. Sorry, keep going. He did Timeline, which is a big flop. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, go on. So you think that... I think he's just like, this is going to be just as good. Don't don't even... Uh, we'll blow out this budget, but we're going to make it back because it's me, Michael Crichton. Don't even worry about it. Because Don't this- even sweat, dog. Jurassic Park... Made of millions and millions of dollars. It's still that, making bank, and that's because, and that that wasn't even my full vision yeah. because I was held back by the fact that some other hack directed this film. <laughs> but th- this is going to be pure Crichton. That's right, and it's going to be the best. And then people are like, "What's this about? Who cares?" And then they accidentally got the actor who played Crichton in Red Dwarf <laughs> that's to, right. to direct. Yep. <laughs> uh, oh dear. Anyway, great stuff. Is it okay? It's boring. Okay, well, that's yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I know they recut it and reshot it, which and... I feel is a Michael Crichton touchstone. If I'm perfectly honest with you, boom, have, got him. Have you read? Yeah, he's dead. It's, read Jurassic Park. It's, it's great. Boring. No, it's, it's not. The book's boring. You're boring. There's a whole sequence where the kids have to hack into a computer. <laughs> yes, and you can see is. all the computer screens. <laughs> yeah, there is. And there's all these like, oh my god, it's Unix. I'm gonna hack into this Unix system. <laughs> there is. Uh, there's clickety, a... clickety, clickety, click. He's going through all sorts of menus. You can see the menus. There's a lot of god, DNA. God, it's dull. <laughs> there's a lot of DNA. So dull. Yeah. But at least in the book, uh, the the main park ranger has a bazooka. That's he's not true. an idiot. Yeah, because he's, he's not an idiot. Yeah. In the book, Robert Muldoon, who yep. gets torn to torn to pieces in the movie, shoots a velociraptor's leg off with a bazooka, bazooka yeah. and it hops away. That's right. Yeah. Dennis Good. Hopper style. That's right. Mm. Go on. Uh, so anyway, uh, but the indie film. Yeah. This, this is a little side note. Um, How can an indie film lose, have be the number one well, it's a, box it's office a, it's a, it's a It's a ju- ratio issue. Okay, so okay sure. This, yeah. It's called Zizix. Wait. Zizix Road. This is from 2006. Okay. Zizix Road. Z Y Z Z Y X. I looked it up. It's a. Uh, it's a. That's a horrible title. I know, but it's a real place. It's on like. It's oh. in like the Mojave Desert. Right. It's like a like a. It's a like a. Sort of a dirt road, partial highway. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Sounds anyway, amazing. Anyway, it's an indie film. It's got Tom Sizemore and Catherine Heigl in it. That wonderful combination. <laughs> Wait, what? Tom Sizemore, Catherine Heigl. Are they a couple? I have no idea. This I've not seen this. I've never heard of this. Anyway, it had a six-day theatrical release <laughs> at the Highland Park Village Theater in Dallas, Texas. It cost one point two million dollars. Yep. That's it. That's indie film money. Yeah. But it earned twenty dollars at the box office from six patrons, two of whom were cast members and got in for free. <laughs> so, Brilliant. So if you go one point two million dollars. Wait, if you divide $20 by $1.2 million, you get 0.0017%. That's the return. I'm trying to spell Zizix Road. Z-Y-Z-Z-Y-X. See, that name in itself Exactly, is... right? Yeah. It says the box office here is 30... Yeah, oh, I thought it was million. It says box office 30 USD. I yeah, was like, right. 30 million? No, yeah, right. $30. Oh, $30. <laughs> okay, well, conflicting reports then, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Maybe somebody in, got in on a child's ticket or... Inflation. Inflation is probably it, you're right. That's yeah. hilarious. These days. Why would you call that? You, I, I wouldn't even know how to... Like, if I read that, I'd be like, I couldn't tell you what it... 
I can't pronounce that yeah, word right. well, to tell somebody. Yeah, right. Well, that's just a guess. Road is just a guess on my behalf. Could be Zyzux. Yeah, could be. Could be yeah. Zyzux. Probably Zizix, so. though. Probably Zizix. We've got a few more mates before we wrap up. I'm ready. Catwoman lost $52 million. Yep. Obviously. Uh-huh. RIPD looks very expensive and lost anywhere between 90 and 140. When did that come out? Does it, do you have a. 13. Th- see, that was. That's a. When, and when did MIB 3 come out? Because when did MIB 2 12. come out? 12. <laughs> yeah. t- 2 was 2002. See, we were sick of MIB. We were, we were sick I was of, sick of MIB halfway through MIB two, yeah. Yeah, see that. So two thousand and two, we were sick of that whole genre. Yeah, of, it's, it's, he's a he's a guy and he's thrown into a wacky world. It's a sci fi world. It's a fantasy world. And how can a, it be? It was just a regular cop. This is this is, this is different. crazy, <laughs> right? We were sick of it in two thousand and two, and then they went to what twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. So after Men in Black three, eleven years they went. Yeah, okay. They did not see the signs. I'm not surprised. And <laughs> shut up. Even with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, well, Green Lantern lost ninety as well. With another even Ryan with Ren- Ryan Reynolds. Even with with Ryan Reynolds, Wind Talkers in 2002 lost 80, 81 million Even dollars. With Ryan Reynolds. Even with Ryan Reynolds, Cage. yeah, Nicholas Cage, which is the one where they use the Native Americans to um to use to have messages that couldn't be coded by the decoded by the Japanese during John World Woo War style. II. Yeah, it's an interesting story. Yeah, it yeah. was John Woo. It was John Woo? Apparently, it's horrendous. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, well, were sick, if, we were sick of John Woo halfway through Mission Impossible too. Yeah, so. mid air, mid <laughs> mid jump, uh, but. I think Wind Talkers is. I think the theory behind that is they went right. Everyone's riding high from Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, right. People love gritty World War Two. Band of Brothers killing yep. it. Mm. Here we go. That's right. Uh, I'm sure. Look, I, people always write in and say, "I can't believe you forgot this particular thing." Believe oh, it. Yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> yeah, we're Don't you worry about that. I'm just double checking my list. I, I've even left ones off. I remember when I was making this list, there was stuff I left off because I'm like, I don't know, like Alexander. What? Yeah, precisely. Final Fantasy: The Spirits Within lost anywhere between seventy-two and one hundred and two million dollars. Obviously, yeah. because it was a CGI movie with all CGI people. Terrifying. Yeah, just and it was right in that it that that was right in the nexus of we can do this, but we shouldn't. Yes, <laughs> nobody right. knew that was peak. We can do this, but we shouldn't. Yeah, uh, this one surprises me until you hear the budget. Also, yes. because it's not great. The uh-huh. Wolfman lost eighty million dollars, but the Wolfman shouldn't have cost. One hundred and fifty million dollars. No, yeah. It's a B horror property. Yeah. And again, they learnt that lesson again seven years later with the mummy. Yeah. So exactly, it's, it's weird, right? Yes. But it's, it's weird, but it, <laughs> there was going to be more than that. But my brain stopped working briefly. But like, is it because Anthony? They were like, well, we can't put Anthony Hopkins in like cheap, you know, blood makeup and. and I, I'd forgotten what movie we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm back. Well, that's I'm with more you. likely. Wolfman. Than, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I mean, like. So that were they like? Listen, we've got a we've got a CGI him. He can just act on stage, and we'll CGI the whole thing. Or yeah, who knows? I don't know. I remember there's a bit where he gets his CGI head knocked off, and oh, that was probably it. Just use a just use an intern. Yeah, use an knock intern. their head off. Yeah. Oh God. Surgically alter him to look like. I nearly, nearly said Anthony Scaramucci. That's dated this episode, hasn't it? <laughs> we, I did that already. Oh, did you? Good. Yeah, I meant I Scaramucci did you that. You put it in my head. That's right. Uh, Jack the Giant Slayer, which was the Jack the Jack and the Beanstalk gritty retelling. Yep. Lost anywhere between 86 and 101 million dollars. Mm. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cleopatra, remember, that's like a classic. Lost a lot of money back in the day. Oh, yeah. Like, even at the time when they were making it, they knew they weren't going to make money back because of the, the elaborate sets and yeah, costumes right. and the people that got involved. Wild Wild West. Also, Ballistics X versus Seven. The, the very great, the Lucy Lou. Uh, Antonio Banderas. Banderas. He's back. Another yeah. bomb for Banderas. But again, C, because Shrek movies. Yes, <laughs> because Shrek. Shrek 2? Yeah. Because he was only in two. Or three, one of them. No, he was in two. He was okay, the cat. Right. Terrific. Yeah. And he was also in three, but it, it, he didn't. Yeah, it was bless his heart. Yeah, that was from two thousand and two. That was before Shrek two. Wow, there you go. Wow, well, that was the era of like blue and black posters. You get your equilibrium. Equilibri- That's right. Yeah, you get your paychecks. Mm-hmm. You get your whatever. That was before they were like blue and black ain't doing nothing for people. Let's make everything blue and orange. That's right. And then we had a decade of blue and orange, and now who knows what it is? Now it's just a whole. It's just people just mashed together on a poster, or nice. it's a face. Just Sometimes a big it's just face. a face, yeah. Is that everything? I think so. All right. That's every conceivable thing. I can't imagine we'd missed everything if we have. Mm-hmm. Why don't you bloody cry about it? All right. Not you. Okay. But why don't you bloody cry about it also? Okay, well. Good. Mm-hmm. Is that the end? I think it's the end, yeah. Not of the show, is it? No, we've got more got segments to, to go. Going. 
Should we throw another ad in somehow? <laughs> okay. You know what I do want to talk about? We'll, we'll yes. do this now. Okay. Um, we've very... Oh, no. This... <laughs> wow, this sounds like you're setting, <laughs> sitting me down for a talk. <laughs> Listen, you're fired. <laughs> How can I fire you? This is a collaborative process. That's true. Uh, we, we've been thinking about Listen, doing... You think that this he's is a doing, collaborative... Oh, he's doing the two-hand point. Two hand. <laughs> You'd think that because this is a collaborative process, you ca- I can't fire you. But it turns out I can. So... I guess it's my house, so in that sense I could make you leave. That's true, but I'm taking my cake. Yeah, fair so. enough. And eating it too? Yeah. Like the expression. Nice. You're welcome. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're thinking about maybe in the future doing an ad-free uh, subscription. For, yeah, so true. Do, yeah. Doing like a slightly... We've reached breaking point, even reached for breaking ourselves. Point. Yeah, but just, I know most people, I don't, people really don't complain about the ads ever. That's Because people true, understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also I'd imagine there'd be people who don't want to hear ads that's true so yeah. we thought you know we might we might do what a, they don't like delightful products yeah oh maybe they don't it's fine that's fine do, <laughs> live, live your life i guess yeah so i don't know we'll just we'll float, I'll just float that out there see what people think um yeah because it's very little kind of effort on our behalf uh, to put it out it's just a little bit more editing it's not much true. to it but mm-hmm. um just a thought if people might be interested in that but uh if not that's also fine mm-hmm. we should do one of those surveys like filthy casuals did to see what people want to hear or topics and ideas and guests and all sorts of things. The yeah, future, Mason, the, the podcasting. Mm-hmm, yeah. All right. Do you know what it's time for now? What's the time for? What are we reading? Oh, what are we going to read? I'm doing a thing. What are we reading today? Well, you read, you watched Death, Death Note. Yeah. Give, talk- some more, give us some more talk about Death Note. Oh, what do you want to know, mate? Um, How's Willem Dafoe in it? He's really good. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's, Johnny Death Note or whatever his name yeah, is. Uh-huh. I can't remember his name. Senor Death Note. Senor Death Note. If you are you familiar, you've read it. Is that right? No, I've read some of the. I've seen some of the anime. And not for you. You said you were like. Ah. Eh. Uh, I've heard some of it's very drawn out. I don't know. I'm I'm just less and less on board with anime as time progresses. I don't know why that is. I think maybe One Punch Man killed me for anime, like because it was so good. Because it was so good. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and it because it takes all the tropes that you knew, Mason, and flips them on their bloody flips head. them on their bloody head. Exactly. Yeah. Fair enough. I, uh, I, it's, it, it's like, there's a good, it's a, got a good soundtrack. It's got some like 80s synth kind of rock. Okay. Yeah. I can't think of any examples and I'm watching it. I'm like, Oh, I like this song, but it's also like, why is this in this? Like yeah, it doesn't right. set the tone. It doesn't fit the tone. It's, it's not the era that it's set in the, the movie itself. Yeah. 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 yeah it, it feels like I said, it feels very compressed. I think mm. if you. Did not like the anime. I think you should watch it. Okay. Because, uh, it, you know, it gives you all the story points you want to know. Does it... Is it odd that it's a Japanese series mm. that's been transplanted to America? Are there bits where you go like, okay, that would have made sense if we were in, J- in Japan? No, I think they do a relatively good job of, like, westernizing it. I think... Okay. I mean, as far as it it makes sense to me, like, I wasn't ever like, I don't understand any of this at all. Like, it, you know... It, okay, sure. But I can also see, like... I understand why people hate it. Right, I okay. completely, I get it. Okay, yeah. but as a, let's say there was never an anime or, or a manga or anything like that, an original version. If you just watched this on your own, yeah. would you be like, "This was good and I enjoyed it," or would you be like, "I would be like, this has some great ideas, but it feels too rushed." Also, okay, the right. ending is bullshit. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it really is, and I don't know whether the comic ends like that. Um, I think it doesn't. I think somebody told somebody said on Twitter that. Like the very, very, very end, like yeah, the right. last sequence. I think somebody scene. somebody said on Twitter that the the Netflix version ends just when the anime gets good. So I think there's more. There's more. Did it feel like uh, we're setting up for a sequel? It felt like that something else should have happened. Okay, right. That's certainly interesting. True. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I. It's a shame. Yeah. Uh, cause, right. Yeah, because there's a lot about it that could have been really good, and mm-hmm. that it's just and it's just fine. Well, there you go. Yeah. Or terrible, depending on yeah. what you think. What have you uh, been Cleanse the palate. Watch, I watched uh, uh, Wet Hot American Summer. The new season. Later. Yeah. I watched that and I haven't really even seen the others. What do you think? I loved it. Yeah, it's fun, right? <laughs> yeah. It's Well, that's the thing. I, I feel it's divisive in the sense that they're all so stupid. Yes. <laughs> that if you're, you're either on board with it or you're not. Have you yeah. not, not seen the previous two? I've seen most of the first movie and none of the second series. Okay, well, I guess it ultimately doesn't matter because... No, it really doesn't. Because they're set... Because the the, the the first one is a prequel to the, the sec the series is a prequel to the movie and this is set ten, 10 years, years after later the movie. right but yeah. they're all and they're all yeah so the so the prequel series everybody's literally de- like a decade older than in the yeah. original movie so they all look older except they're supposed to be 
a Late day 20s. younger. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. But except for Paul Rudd, who looks the same. Yes. And now it's been another <laughs> ten years, and it's and and Paul Rudd looks the same. Looks age. the same. How does yeah. he do it? What's his know. secret? Yeah, yeah. Drinking is a murder. Any- Probably. Keeps him young. Anyway, I guess you don't really have to watch him in any order. Although, no. yeah, I think you should watch him in order because there's because they flash back to stuff, and I'm like, oh, I should have watched that. Yeah, because yeah. that probably would have been funny. Yeah. Oh, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, I said I was going to start on Kill or Be Killed, and which is the Ed Brubaker comic book series. Hard to say, isn't it? It's real good. It's hard to say. Brubaker, so good, real good. Yeah. So to quick recap, it's a dude who it's it's Ed Brubaker. Hard to say. Uh, mm-hmm. Who did Captain America Winter Soldier? He did Criminal. He did Sleeper. He did a lot of other great stuff. He did The Fade Out, which is a series I enjoyed a lot. Right, right. Um, but it's it's about a guy who he's gone through some tough times. He goes up to a rooftop, thinks about killing himself. He changes his mind, but he falls off the roof and he falls six stories. He doesn't die. And then when he goes back up to like his apartment, he's visited by a dev- a demon or a devil of some sort who's like, "I saved your life. Now you have to kill." one person a month ah, in exchange yeah. and like and it's it's very much like and it, it's told in like flashback and flash forward yeah and you get you know you get some action and then you get some recap of how it happened and blah 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 but it's also very much he's a guy who's like you know he's 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 gone off his medication and he's a know, loose unit he's kind of a loose unit and it's it's very much up in the air as to whether this is actually happening or he's just gone insane ah, so it's okay. pretty good and it's it's done in kind of an intelligent very like an intelligent kind of way. Yeah. Like it's not, I don't know. And it, and it feels, it feels like very much like a real, like a real world. Like he's, the world is fleshed out enough. Yeah. And, and he goes through enough like real life struggles and relationships and issues and friendships and what have you, that it doesn't, he doesn't feel like a cardboard cutout. Like the, the idea of this, you know, maybe it's real or maybe I'm crazy. Like that's a trope that's been done before. Yeah. But there's a, there's enough real world, it's it's fleshed out enough that you go oh, okay well I'm I'm t- I'm totally on board with is this real or is this not because he seems like a real character so it is kind of, it do, it is real world yeah a lot of it, except yeah. for the demon exactly yeah. but like initially he's like I'm not gonna do this for you you know what are you yeah. gonna do to me and the devil breaks his arm ah. and then he goes to like a friend's place and you know he shows up with this broken arm and he's like well maybe the this demon did it, or maybe I just broke my arm when I fell off the roof. Right, and yeah, like it's, yeah. It's only just hit me because the adrenaline's worn off. Like so, ah, it's all very up in the air. Okay, Pretty good. Mm. Cool. Okay. I also read a, a comic book called Generation Gone, which is yep. about hackers with superpowers. Boom. That's, that's real good. That's good. It's good. It's good. You wouldn't think a comic book about hackers in 2017 with superpowers would no. be good, but it's it's that's very good. good. Yeah, it's real good. Two top quality recommendations. Top quality Mason. reads. A lot of people have written in and said the tick. Watch the tick. Yeah, which is on Amazon Video. I Apparently, think. it's very good. So oh. I'm, I will. Who is the tick now this time around? Peter Serafinowicz. What again? No, is it? Yes, he's back. That one was a. Oh, that pilot. was Putty. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the previous one was Putty. Yeah, they did a okay. pilot earlier, and this yeah, is okay. the season. Apparently, oh, there you go. It's, it's good at deconstructing the genre. Oh, okay, I'm you on know, board. like Deadpool. Yeah, that guy's funny. Yeah, look at his balls. <laughs> <laughs> Always making us look at his balls. Ready for the next? Oh yeah, cool. Thing? The classic one was letters, oh letters. 198. Hang on to here right now, we're gonna do letters. In my defense, the letters segment only started like a hundred and hundred and ninety-eight! Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, if you want to reach the show via a tweet, you can yes. hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. If you want to send an email, Mason loves emails. I do love emails. Uh, Weekly Planet Pod at gmail dot com. Um, there's a lot of unread emails in there, Mason. <laughs> You're all right. I'm getting to it. All right. Uh, just this is from uh, Jesse. Just saw Terminator 2 3D release. Best minigun scene in a movie. I think we've talked about this. Yeah. We need more Mason's minigun minutes. I agree. Think? If they'd put some more miniguns in movies or TV shows, some people are like, oh, check out this minigun. It's not a minigun. It's a big gun. It's a big gun, but it's not a minigun. Not a minigun. I'm, I'm, it's a very specific weapon. Is the Terminator one the best minigun minute? Even no. though he doesn't kill anybody? Yes, because there's... It feels real. It feels real, and it feels like there's some legit destruction happening. Like yeah. He, like he just... Like he slices the a roots swath, off police cut. Mason. Yeah, he cuts a swath. Yeah. He cuts a bloody swath. Do you think it's... So it is the best one. I think so. Should we do a minigun episode? Yeah, I hope, yeah maybe. But I mean, like, until... What I want to see 
is somebody being chopped to pieces with one. That's all I want. That's what I wanted in Daredevil I think season you go two. To Dred- Dred's got a good mini gun. There's some CGI muzzle flashes. Yeah, in that. see, but it's mm. it's hyper stylized. It's the world. It's, it's that's. It's, I don't it's want hyper stylized. You want a man? I want somebody getting... just staggering around. A swath. They've, they've been hit with a hundred bullets, like a like a like a sash across their chest. Just whoosh, and they slide. And they slide in half. Yeah, no stylization. No right. pretty colors. I want it. Just somebody being riddled with bullets. Okay, fine, Mason. Yeah. You psychopath. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. Do you want to read a well, letter? That's the thing. I'm not. I'm do, not. I'm still looking tweet? for one. Yeah. I had a letter, but it was about the tick. So. Oh, very yeah, good. So Sorry, did I ruin that for you? You kind of did, but that's all right. Did you just say watch the tick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a great letter you picked out, Mason. You dumbass. Mm. Some Jan. Hey, dickheads. What are your thoughts on pro wrestling? Are you fans or former fans? Thanks. I'm not a fan, uh, but I'm not also, because I hate it. Yes. What about you? Uh, I'm also not a fan. <laughs> yeah, because you hate it? Yeah. Do you really? We're two peas in a pod. Yes. No, I don't know. I, no, I'm not against it. I never, because it kind of sporadically was here as a kid. I liked the idea of it, but you couldn't really, it was hard to access. You maybe had yeah. a friend who had a thing. Yeah. Like a rich friend who had I, a subscription. I, just, I'm just, I think I'm just against oily men with big underpants on. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I watched the Conor McGregor fight today, Mason. There's oh, yeah. a thing I watch we reading in Mayweather. Yeah. yeah. People said it was the fight of the century and he did better than he should have in boxing. That's what they said. Well, look, I, I don't particularly want to comment on either of those people, but I'm astounded it lasted more than 45 seconds. Yeah. But do you think it's in everybody's interest that it doesn't last 45 seconds? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. You know who the real winner is? Those two? Because they Cause both, one got got a, both got $100 million. Min- or minimum, yeah. Yeah. They're, they are the winners. Yeah. Pretty much. Would you let somebody beat you up for ten rounds for a hundred million dollars? Yeah, you'd probably he'd probably kill you. Oh, him? Yeah, <laughs> no, then no. What about me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I probably couldn't kill you. Here's a letter. This is from Jeremy Franklin. All right. Uh, he says uh, his wife and I, my wife and I, regularly watch movies together. I started yelling "Huzzah!" whenever a character says the movie title. That's the game "Huzzah." <laughs> yes. Um, so far, it gets a laugh one third of the time. I believe the sample size is too small. Yep. Going to the movies with my in-laws, I'll test there and report back my findings. Very good. Thank you, thank you, Jeremy. How many times do you have to go to the movies with his in-laws to get a? An I think he'll only get one, and then they'll never do it again. Yeah, but also you got to pick your movie, don't you? Does that's he got to go and see the movie before to make sure they say the name, they of, the name movie of the movie? The movie, that's true. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. man. It's so quite the undertaking, Jeremy. Yeah. But I respect your your, your abilities. <laughs> what if enth- every week enthusiastically he's like, "Hey guys, let's all we get have together. to go. We have to go to the movies." Oh, bloody Jeremy wants to go to the bloody movies again. Mm. I don't want to see King Arthur. That's true. <laughs> they definitely say King Arthur and King Arthur, would they? Oh yeah, that's Ooh, a box may- office. No, maybe bomb. they wouldn't though. At the end. Uh, maybe like all hail King Arthur maybe yeah. just the once at the end and then okay. title card yeah, yeah yeah that seems like a high Richie thing to do I should mention pro wrestling yeah I like the idea of it uh-huh. I don't understand why people are like that's dumb and superhero movies are smart or vice right. versa uh-huh. it's all theatrics and but the way like they really put their bodies on the line I know it's all choreographed but they're still fl- they're oh still- you said it very effectively thank yourself. you because I didn't have to th- I didn't think <laughs> about it I just went straight into it yeah, blocking mm-hmm. but they throw them. They really throw themselves around, and they're big men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like when you've got that much mass on you, and you're moving that quickly and landing that hard, it's not good for you. Like it's in, it's incredible what they can do. That's true. Yeah. So I respect it, yeah. but I just don't care. <laughs> nice. Uh, you got another letter? I can do uh, another. This is from Hayd Miller. Yep. Uh, he, uh, me and my friends are embarking out on a two day long, thirty hour total Marvel movie marathon. God. Uh, have either of you two done any marathons? If so, what was it? And did you enjoy it? If you were to do a movie marathon, what would it be? I tried to do Lord of the Rings once, the extended editions. Yeah. I got about 20 minutes into the second one. In a cinema? No. At home? Yes. By yourself? Yeah. No, it was other people there. Oh, fant- fantastic. Yeah. Recently at the Astor, which is our local sort of iconic movie theater, they did the Fast and the Furious movies. Wow. Like all eight in a row. And, and I wanted to go desperately. I couldn't make it out to work. You did not want to go I, desperately. No, that's true, yeah. But you did want to go. Well, again, I think I would have gone just to see what the fans were like. like who's, <laughs> who's, because that's the thing. Like, I like the last couple, the, yeah. the ones that I've seen, I think are great. And I like them because they're hilarious and nobody in those movies is really taking them that seriously. And there's that bit where Jason Statham shoots up a plane full of terrorists while holding a baby. Yeah, it was great. Like, it's great. But are there people who enjoy them... Like there's going to be people there like me and there's going to be like other people. There's going to be people like you and there's going to be other people. That's true, yeah. Yeah, I hear you, man. It's a circle of life. It is the circle of life. Yeah. I think my... 
I think I think these days two movies is my maximum. I now. can't do a movie marathon. Yeah. I'm not. I mean, I don't like like I don't like flying because you have to sit for so long. Yeah. So I can't imagine. I know you can get up at a movie and go out and get a popcorn or whatever, but yeah. no. I'd if I was to do a marathon, it'd be at home. Like I'll sh- I'll watch a show. That's true. But yeah. I can. But I can. I'm I'm in my house. Yeah. I like that. I like being in my house. I don't like being somewhere else for 10 hours. What if everybody in the cinema gets one pause? <laughs> How big... Hmm, Fast and Furious fans, what are they doing? They're probably doing donuts. They're yeah, probably, doing donuts. They doing, put on a sleeveless vest and a big gold chain and they do doughies. In the, par- in the, car, in the car park, park yeah. yeah. And everyone gets one. Everyone gets one. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. You've got, you can pee or you can do a doughie. <laughs> They're your options. I'd do a doughy. Yeah, same. You'd, be, you'd have to, wouldn't you? And you could pee while you're doing it. Yeah, they wouldn't know. Exactly. And you could yeah. be like, well, was VTech kicked in, yo. I don't know. I don't know, man. I used I too know. much an os and I peed myself. That happens. Yeah, no, I don't. So that's the thing. I don't think I could do, because it's very rare now that there's three movies that are great in a row. Yep. And like I like I respect the idea of watching the Marvel movie marathon. Oh, it's incredible. But there are some movies in there. That are a, would, I don't want to watch Iron Man too. For, yeah, yeah which would be a chore for me now, and I don't want to have to sit through them just to say I did. Yeah, yeah. Like it's a young man's game. It certainly is. Yeah. Well, I I like like there's movies that I like. That, like I, I don't want to watch Civil War again anytime soon. I yeah. like Civil War, but I don't want to watch it. That's true. You know. So mm. uh, it's from Nate. Last tweet. Hashtag tag Weekly Planet Pod. Uh, you think that Liam Neeson will return as a Force Ghost, Qui Gon Jinn, in the Kenobi movie? No. But I say yes. Really? Well, because it's hinted at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Um, he invented Force Ghosts. Oh, yeah, it's a good point. Also, he'll have to teach yeah. Obi-Wan Kenobi how to be a Force Ghost. Yeah. I think they're going to forget all that happened. Okay, you got to stand real still and let somebody stab you. And then- <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. all there is to it. Now, I'm pretty sure this is going to work. I mean, <laughs> statistically speaking, hundreds or even thousands of Jedis have died before me. And I can't see any of them anywhere. I'm not 100% on the math. I don't know if... <laughs> I mean, it's worked for... It pro- may not work for you, but it definitely will. Just let him stab you. <laughs> I mean, there are probably other ways out of it. Whatever situation you're in where some guy's going to stab you might be other ways out of it. Maybe fight him better. Yeah. The thing is, when I died, he took me by surprise. I want you to stand still <laughs> and let him Just hit you. Just maybe bring your sword down. It's fine. <laughs> It's going to freak him out, though. Yeah. Do you think Qui-Gon watching that would have been like, holy shit, I didn't disappear. Yeah, because right. who else disappeared? That's true, yeah. He like and then took Obi-Wan, it to a next level. Obi-Wan shows up in the afterlife and he's like, yeah, what do you reckon? What of it? What now? <laughs> Maybe try again. Oh, you can't. You're dead. It's me, Obi-Wan. <laughs> You're pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Yeah. So, no, I think there's a good chance he could turn up. Well, Liam Neeson has turned up in uh, Clone Wars as well, so... Yeah, I think there's a possibility. Yeah. Gianfranco Gervasio also asked mm. uh, if, if if we'd see that Qui Gon Jinn. I don't think I don't think we will. They said yes. I don't think we will. Though. Tell him yes. Nah. What's the what's the automatic response? Oh, uh, let me check. Yes and yes, it says. Yes and yes. Oh, no, there's also I don't think so. He's getting it. I don't think so. Okay, well yeah. that's not fair, is it? Because yeah. that's not what we both think. Yeah. If you're listening, John Ralphio. Um, <laughs> John Franco Gervasio also has a spinal cord injury uses a wheelchair can he be the official official Professor X of the podcast absolutely you may 100% yeah Professor X how did he get Professor X last time in the Professor in the X-Men movie he he went into his mind they had a mind fight and he went bald that's right yes. that's right yeah. and then in the last one he was stabbed to death <laughs> In, Le- in Logan, he was stabbed to death. Oh, he was too. Yeah. Sorry, that was the last one mm. because he, he he had to take the mind drugs to stop him from. Yeah. And then he was stabbed. Then he was stabbed. To I'm death. thinking of the previous yeah. previous one. Yeah. Oh, very good. There's less nuance in being stabbed to death. Well, he had a bit of a soliloquy, didn't he, before yeah, he went did. out? Yeah. Is the is the soliloquy more of a song though? No, a soliloquy is uh, it's it's to yourself ultimately. Yeah. Yeah, so he wasn't doing. He had a chat more than anything. Yeah, he had a, ch- had a bit of a chat. Look, I tried. Oh, look, I rolled the dice on a fancy word. I blew it. All right, what do you want from me? Okay, mm. that's the show. Nice. Uh just wanted to say, Mason has oh, no, some thoughts go. on episode two hundred. Oh no, you son I've of a bitch! I've thrown you under the bus. You have thrown me under the bus. <laughs> You've thrown me under your little red bus mug there. This was a gift. You get a lot of gifts as a teacher, Mason. I used to be a teacher. You know that. Yes. This is a London bus yeah. mug. Mm-hmm. It's from a girl called Matilda. Huh. Yeah. And I go. love it. It's my favourite mug. 
It's do good, you, isn't uh, it? Do you drive it around in your desk sometimes? You make vroom vroom noises? Listen, that's between me and this mug, but yes. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Boy, who the funk would make it to 200 episodes? I mean, it's possible. It's possible. It's, 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 it's much... It's... It's quite likely in the world of podcasting that you can make it to 200 episodes. The fact that anyone is listening after yes, 200 episodes that's is the, the astounding that's part. That's the part that's Isn't amazing. It though, yeah. yeah. So, look, it's doing this has afforded me like so much freedom in my life. From you know, I get to spend time with my family. I work from home. Uh-huh. You know what I mean. If it's, I had a family, I could do that too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit lonely, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> but now uh, I have the listeners. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And there's yeah. more of them than there is of your stupid family. <laughs> There's tons of listeners. <laughs> I'm claiming all the listeners. You can have your dumb family. I don't care. Have them, dumb kid. But it, it is incredible uh, because, like, we these are like we've said a hundred times. I'm sure we we these are conversations we just have, and they're amusing to us. Yes, but it's one of those things where that really translates to something that people would think would be interesting. That's true. Because you know when somebody's like, "This is my funny friend," and you meet him, you're like, "Oh, he sucks." Yeah, I, yeah, I get a lot of oh, you meet this guy, you love him. I don't, <laughs> and maybe it's because they've like they've been like you'll love him, and I'm like oh, don't tell me what to yeah, do. Yeah, I definitely don't will tell not. me who to like. <laughs> yeah, like I don't like. And somebody be like some, you know, sometimes people are like you like him, he's funny, and I'm like, why would I like someone who's funnier than me? <laughs> yeah, that's, exa- that's, that's all exactly I got right. is being sort of funny sometimes. <laughs> no. That's exactly right. But no, we it's incredible. And who knows how long it will go for. I mean, we don't have any plans to not do it, do we? That's true. We haven't had any kind of riffs or anything yet. So yep. a rift is always around the corner though, <laughs> That's you know? That's true, yeah. Mm. Yeah. What would you do if we didn't if we didn't do this? Yep. Say we, we rifted. Oh, yeah. Would you do another podcast? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I would do is I That's would, a betrayal. What Mason. I would do is I would guest star. I would, I would appear as a guest on other people's podcasts until that stopped yielding like an increased <laughs> listenership for them and then people would stop asking. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You drive it into the ground. That's right. Yeah, fair enough. All right, that's the show for this week. That's Do right. the end of the show, Mason. Oh, let's see. You can contact us on Weekly Planet Pod on Facebook and Gmail and Twitter and Bandcamp. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. 200 episodes going strong. <laughs> Still have to explain it a lot of the time to people. <laughs> yes. Encyclopedia Brown. That's There was a series of books I read as a child. I don't really... I didn't read them. I don't... I'm okay, not, that's fine. It's not a reference I get. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else? Uh, if you want to support the show, you can go to bloody... Uh, Patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Chuck in a buck. Chuck in a buck. You can go to Amazon.com. Wait, that's not it. We've got an Amazon affiliate link. It's in the episode description. You can click on that. If you want to help out the show by doing what you would probably do anyway, because everybody shops on Amazon, yep. just click on the link. It goes through to regular Amazon. Buy your weekly stuff on Amazon. How does it work? How we get we get a kickback somehow. I don't know, but you don't have to spend any extra money. It's amazing. We don't care how it works. That's we right. We like the money. Love it. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, there's some teas on tpublic.com that's all linked below thank you the brute and the basilisk and rack them for all our themes thank you to raw collings who does heaps of stuff for us oh he's the best including our newsletter so if you want to subscribe to the newsletter which every week that comes out and like man planet broadcasting does a lot of stuff a lot of stuff going planet on there planetbcasting.com soon to be planetbroadcasting.com Broadcasting. don't all click get, that now it's all getting revamped Ooh, it's all happening very That'll, good it's, un, it's just, coming just load up planetbroadcasting.com and click, keep refreshing until a website appears never stop mm-hmm uh, uh, what else? Anyway, that it. newsletter. Subscribe to that bloody yeah, newsletter. That's that's bloody newsletter. Good. Give it a bloody listen. Um, I think that's it. Thank, think, thanks for everybody for listening. Yeah, man. Madness. Madness. Episode 200, 201? Uh, maybe, yeah. Downward yeah. spiral from here. We're yeah. talking about the Inhumans next oh, week. Oh, God, yeah, aren't we? Uh, and Game of Thrones! GIT Bros 2017! Yeah, all right. <laughs> Fine, God. Okay. Wait, are we doing in- Inhumans and Game of Thrones episode next I guess week? so, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then... Do you want to do Inhumans this week, Game of Thrones next week? Well, I don't think anyone will care about Inhuman, like Game of Thrones the week after. That's a good point. This yeah. is probably an off-air we'll conversation. We'll just wedge it in. It doesn't matter. It is. It is an Man, off-air this, conversation. This is a real rift. The rift is starting. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. I figured maybe you could, if you wanted to save... Game of Thrones for your 200th appearance on you the podcast. Son of a bitch. <laughs> you got me. I did get you. That's if you love Game of Thrones. You haven't done 200 episodes yet. What do you reckon? What do you reckon about that? I want to rift and then I'll do two more with someone else. Oh, no. and, then I'll, and then I'll quit. Then, oh, and then I'll tear no. it all down. We should do three more. Then. I should. You're right. Yeah, do yeah. three more.
This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.